I've played 200 days of Stardew Valley 1.6 and I have obtained perfection. Hello everybody, this is GamerGar. Welcome to the very first Stardew Valley 1.6 mega movie. In this video, we are going to play through all of the elements of this game in order to achieve perfection. So sit down, relax, have a nice cup of tea and enjoy this super long form compilation of the 100 days and 200 days Stardew Valley 1.6 challenge. We start by picking up 15 pieces of hay. We're not going to get the usual parsnips, not in this challenge. We're going to go check out our coop, check out our chickens to see how they're doing. I also notice there's blue grass on the ground as well. If the chickens eat that, they do get some extra friendship points. So we're going to feed up our chickens, make sure they're nice and happy. These chickens will mature in a few days and they will give us lovely eggs every single day afterwards. We're going to clear up some space on the farm. I am going to get some crops. I do have 500 gold to spend after all. I'm going to cut down some trees, whack some weeds, make a chest and prep this fabulous farming ground for lovely crops. Our chickens are Porcini and Portobello. Fabulous names. I also noticed we have some additional UI screens. What we see here is the screen is going to hold all of our usual 1.5 special items such as the wallet items but also some books of power that we'll touch off later on in the challenge. We also have new fish types that have been added to the game. Let's see if we can capture every fish in the game within the first year. Let's also see if we can get every single artifact the game has to offer as well, just to set some challenges for ourselves. I noticed Pierre sells an item here called a dehydrator. We can place five pieces of fruit or edible mushrooms inside to dry them out. It will give us back an artisan good. I'm going to spend all my money on parsnip seeds because the chickens aren't going to cut it for a few days, so I do want to rely on crops for a while as our base source of money. At the end of day one, we reach level one foraging. I got a cool new text here saying trees sometimes drop seeds. I don't think that was included in the 1.5. Correct me in the comments if I am wrong. It was time to check out the help wanted quests. Demetrius wants us to fish up some carp. He's offered 90 gold. I took this quest because we're going to be fishing up carp regardless. So having some 90 gold on the side is no harm to us. Our first fish of the challenge is a sardine. Let's go have a chat with Willy. He is selling a new item here called a fish smoker. To make it, we need a cave, river and sea jelly and some hardwood. The fish smoker will double the profits of any fish we put into it, including legendary fish. So we will get to absolutely abuse that later on in the challenge and make tons of money. For now, I'm going to purchase a training rod and focus on getting my skill up as fast as I can just so I can get that larger fishing bar so I can take on the tougher fish. A pop-up appeared there that says you've got new ideas to sleep on. This means you've gained a level in a skill. So we just got our first level there. The Georgia Cola has been enhanced. We now get a plus one speed buff for 21 in-game seconds when we take the Georgia Cola. Very helpful for getting around. I got my first river jelly today. That's a new type of fish added to our fishing collection. 75 energy, 33 health and plus 30 max energy. I suppose it's all right, but I'm going to sell it to see how much money I get. The next day, our chickens have fully grown up. They're going to pop out eggs every single day now. And we can even turn those eggs into mayonnaise later on. I'm also going to purchase the fiberglass rod off Willy. Now, instead of getting the trout soup, I noticed he has a new item, catfish bait. He does have a huge rotating stock. I was just lucky to get catfish bait today. It dramatically increases the capture rate of catfish. So if I use catfish bait instead of regular bait, most of the time when my fishing barber goes off, I get to challenge a catfish. And catfish are probably still one of the most profitable fish in spring. He also has deluxe bait. It makes my fishing bar a little bit bigger. And the fish also bite a little bit faster. It does cost 100 gold a piece, so I'm going to hold off on that for now. Later on in the day, I do put down some rice shoots, just because it's extra money for nothing. I don't have the water at all. And for the rest of the day, I focus on the fishing collection. I pull up the eel there and I get level 3 fishing at the end of the day, which was nice. Level 4 fishing, though, gives me the worm bin now. That used to be level 7 or 8 fishing, so it's nice to get that early. I still won't be using it, though, because it's just regular bait and it is quite cheap. It is quite common. Taking a look at the calendar the next day, I noticed that a bookseller comes twice in the season. There's also another event that happens on the 15th, the 16th and the 17th of spring. At that moment in time, I had no clue what that was. I eventually learn that it is an event that takes place in the desert. So the challenge now that I have imposed by myself is to get to the desert.
by day 15 of spring. A lot of you might think to yourself that is impossible. Let's find out. I am Gamer Gar after all. <laughs> it is time to go back to Pierre. I have some money from fish. I'm going to use it all on potatoes. They give really good XP and they also sell for really nice money. 60 potatoes in the bag. We're also going to visit Gunther as well. I was going to keep the ruby for the potential spicy eel when I get to the desert, but I decided to give him in the mineral just to get the ball rolling with his quest line. I got a new fish today. It's called a gobby or maybe a goby. Let me know in the comments if it's goby or gobby. But it's a new fish and it's actually worth quite a bit of money. Now we can see the cost of the fishies here because I'm not using any mods on this video because the patch is new. So we're just going into this challenge with no mods. <laughs> We do get some really cool items at Iran though, that will display the cost of items. Level 5 fishing, we're going to get fish worth 25% more because right now, I am all about making as much money as possible to get access to the desert. The gobby here sells for 150 gold and that's just a regular gobby. It'll be interesting to see how an iridium gobby fares up to that. It might be a very, very profitable fish indeed. Marnie visits us the next day with our brand new pet, she asks us, will we adopt a dog? Absolutely. We're going to call our lovely dog Chuck, because that's what my dog is called in real life. We can now have as many pets as we wish on this farm. The only requirement is to max out Chuck's friendship, and we can purchase some really cool pet bowls and off Robin, and then purchase pets off Marnie. It is now day number five. It is time to do some cave crawling. I want to get down as quickly as possible to the bottom floors, because the gold bars early on sell for some decent money. And if I want to get into the desert, I'm going to have to sell everything that I absolutely can. I do get an early weapon upgrade. I can trade out my rusty sword for the wood club. It is quite the weapon to get early on in the challenge. It will make very short work of most of the starter to mid-tier enemies. I get level 10 and 20. I do get to steal small sword on level 20, but I throw it away because it just doesn't measure up to the power of the wood club that we have here. I do get loads of really cool carrot seeds out of crates. And carrot is basically a new crop that we can grow in spring. Concerned Abe has added a new crop like that to each season. So summer, fall and even winter, we get some pretty cool crops that we can grow. I took on another help wanted quest. I noticed that there is a prized ticket for this one. And these tickets are really cool. We can take this prized ticket to Lewis's house. And he has a machine inside that will give us a reward. And you can get quite the potent rewards from that machine. Because it's Saturday, I fixed the bridge, I went over to the tide pool area and I'm going to pick up all of these forgeables, sell these for extra money. I did a bit more fishing today, I picked up a sea jelly, this is my very first sea jelly. And what's cool about this is it gives good energy and health, but it also gives a plus one to fishing. That could be handy. I won't use it though, I'm saving all my jellies to make the new artisan equipment. So I completed Mayor Lewis's quest, he gave me my very first prize ticket. I was very excited with this because it was all new. And it's been so long since new updates have hit Stardew Valley. I went to the prize machine here and the first prize is going to be 12 carrot seeds. So I was really excited to put these carrots down into the farm, grow them up and see how profitable they were. To see what kind of health and energies they gave. The rest of the day was spent fishing. This time in Cindersap Forest by the waterfall. Really cool aesthetic they're added to the map. I get my first dose of carrots today. Regular carrot, 75 energy, 33 health. It's not bad, it was Mayor Lewis's birthday, I gave him a carrot. He was actually fairly pleased with it, and I got him up to 2 out of 10 hearts, which wasn't bad at all. I went back to Pierre and I sold him the rest of the carrots to see what they were worth. 35 gold each, but they're only regular carrots, so it's not the end of the world. I do purchase 82 whopping kale seeds, I'm going to make a ton of money from these. Of course, it will require a lot of time, a lot of energy to water up that kale, but it'll be worth it. I also got some cauliflower there as a reward for giving Gunther some artifacts. And we're back down in the mines, wiping out some enemies, making some progress. We're on for 28 at the moment. I was hoping for some sneaky ancient seeds off of these bugs, but I don't get that lucky. Made it down to the dark floors and I picked up a dwarf scroll. I actually get very lucky with the dwarf scrolls, I do get a lot very early on. But it does take me quite some time to get the fourth scroll that I need to get the dwarvish translations guide. I made it down to 440, I pick up the slingshot. I'm just going to throw that away because I don't use the slingshot. I will, however, keep the master slingshot. I will need that for Ginger Island later on. That's if I get to Ginger Island, of course. When I get copper ore on the mid-tier floors, I always pick it up because copper is needed for kegs. It's going to be needed for so many things later on in the video to make some decent money. 
I do get the Tundra Boots, that's extra armour for me. We're going to take all the defence we can get. I just wiped out an elite slime there, I picked up the lead rod. That's a big upgrade from the wood club, I was very happy with that. Managed to get a diamond on floor 56, it's really lucky there. The next day, I pulled up more cards from the ground, I will sell those cards for extra money. It was also time to check out a new area, just up above the Georgia Mart, and I've never seen this area before, so this has been added with the 1.6 update. There was some forgeables up here that I could collect, and I imagine this area would hold many more secrets that we get to uncover later on on our fabulous adventure. So we're now in the 9th, and I need to be in a desert by the 15th. I needed more money, so we had to pack in the caves for just a little bit and focus on money. So I do decide to make some furnaces today. Now, I made 5 furnaces in total. It did use up most of the copper I had, but it just means I won't have to make furnaces for a long, long time. Back to the mines for 55, I got another diamond. They sell for 750 gold a pop, so that's a really good source of money early on. Double diamonds, the next floor, I got a second diamond, I was really happy with that. And on the next floor, floor 57, I got a mystery node with a third diamond. That's three diamonds in one day. How can you ask for better luck? The crystal dagger on floor 60. I'm not going to throw the crystal dagger away, I'm going to keep it and sell it to Marilyn in the Adventurer's Guild for some extra cash. I will get a few hundred gold for that, it does make the difference early on. That's 200 extra gold in the bag. Level 6 fishing gives me a bait maker and it also gives me a sonar bobber. The bait maker will give you back bait specific to the fish you put in there. That's very helpful. And the sonar bobber attached to a rod will basically tell you what fish you're trying to hook up. Both extremely useful fishing tools. We're now on day 10 and look at all these fabulous potatoes. We still have the kale grown but we're going to get lots of money from this. We also got a skill up there as well and because it was raining we are going to attempt to pull up even more catfish. We're also going to go down to the tide pools to see if there's any other forgeables we can get. The reason why I wanted to get some extra forgeables is because I wanted to make the bait maker machine. I needed some coral, I needed a sea urchin and some iron bars to make it. I wanted to put in some catfish to get back some catfish bait so I can pull up even more catfish to make a profit. The help wanted quest had a prize ticket as a side reward. I picked it up straight away. It was then back down into the mines we were wiping out dust brights. There's a really cool quest indicator on the right hand side of the screen that tells us our progress every time we kill a dust sprite. It was really helpful to have that. Once the dust sprites were dead, I did use up the rest of the day to make some progress in the mines. I then went back to the farm, I created the bait maker, I'll just put it there beside the shipping bin. And any sort of fish that I want to get more of in the future, I can just bop it in there to make bait for that fish. I put in a gold star catfish. But I only got back five pieces of catfish bait. I wasn't too impressed with that. I was hoping for a little bit more. But I'll take it nonetheless. I can't put that back into my rod and it will dramatically increase the capture rate of catfish. I got a cool cutscene here of Mr. Key flying over Sergio Valley, dropping all of these mystery boxes. And mystery boxes can be found all over the place. You can get them from hauling up the ground. You can get them from killing enemies, cutting down trees. You can get them from fishing treasure chests. They're everywhere to be found. Demetrius came along, I selected mushrooms because mushrooms are way more profitable than the Batcave. The bookseller also visited Stardew Valley, he had loads of books here. Some books will just give you XP towards a specific profession. Other books will give you actual powerful passive skills like the Way of the Wind here. It was 15,000 gold, but it does make you run a little bit faster permanently. We also had Horse the book, makes your horse run faster. Old Slither Legs makes you run faster through grass and crops, I mean, they're all really handy. The Woodcutter's Weekly just gives you forge and XP, but then we had the price catalog. I wanted this the most, I just couldn't afford it right now because I wanted to get to the desert. Uh, that means you can see the value of your items in your inventory. So it's time to go to Georgia Road. Yes, Georgia for life. Let's drive together, everyone. 5,000 gold for the Georgia membership, and all I need now is 40,000 gold to get access to the fabulous desert. I had a few days to do it, but I was feeling confident in my money-making abilities. The next prize I got from using the prize ticks was an orange sapling. I just put that down in the farm. I was really curious about this iridium tea. At this moment in time, I'm calling it iridium tea because that's what it looked like. It looked like a fabulous cup of iridium tea. The rest of the day, again, was spent fishing because I needed to prioritise money. I really wanted to get into this desert event. It would be so nice to get to this event in the first year, especially... Because the 1.6 is so new, I just didn't want to wait a whole year to experience it. 
I got some mystery boxes too, and Clint can break those open. Level 3 foraging now gives moss soup, and it also gives the cookout kit. It's nice to get the cookout kit earlier, rather than later. It was then time to water up our lovely kale, and in the next day or two that kale will fully mature and we can harvest it and get tons of money. I also got Clint to process these mystery boxes to see what they were all about. 10 mixed seeds is actually very impressive. That's 10 crops right there we can grow and sell. I also got 10 quality fertilizers. That's a game changer to get those early. That's going to dramatically increase the quality of my crops, meaning more money for me. I got a complete breakfast out of a trash can. I'll sell that. I also got the master slingshot on floor 70 in the mines. So I'm going to keep the master slingshot. I will need that for Ginger Island later on. For the rest of the day, we're just making some regular progress through the mines. I did get a quest off Clint to fetch some iron ores. I decided to take that quest on because I was farming up iron ores anyway, so the extra money was just going to be a handy side project for me. All of these bats were a welcome addition, the bat wings I can sell, plus extra experience. I gave Clint his iron ores, he was over the moon about that, and it was extra money in the bag for me. I got 315 gold for those and I get to keep the ores as well. Later on I fished up the Neptune's Glaive, it has been slightly modified, it now gives a bonus plus 3 attack. It didn't have that in 1.5, it was really nice to get it. I also got a diamond as well, which was just beautiful. I got the bone sword for killing the skeleton enemies, but I'm going to swap it out now for the Neptune's Glaive, because it is a far superior weapon. The next day, we're scything up all of our kale. I also got a level up in farming. I believe that's farming level 6 now, so I can make some quality sprinklers going forward. I also got lots of eggs here from my fabulous chickens, and I do make mayonnaise machines very soon. And I'm going to put the eggs inside to make an additional profit going forward. I have four mayonnaise machines working there now at the moment. It was time to go to our fabulous Easter event. Now, I didn't come here to buy strawberries because I wanted to get into the desert. I came here just to ensure I didn't miss anything that might have been added to this because the 1.6 is new, lots of updates. I didn't find anything new that was added, so it was a bit of a waste. I did get a free straw hat though from whooping the kids at uh, finding the Easter eggs, so I suppose there was that. Before the day ended, I did run down to the tide pools, I nabbed up the forageables, and I processed some eggs into mayonnaise. Level 5 farming, I'm going to go with tailor crops or 10% more, because I suppose I'm using more crops now than I'm using farm animals. I haven't even bought any additional chickens yet. I made lots of money today from selling crops and other bits and bobs. 11,000 gold. That money primarily came from selling the kale. Kale is actually quite a profitable crop. It's a very good spring crop indeed. And I got some money from the mayonnaise, 190 gold each. It wasn't too bad at all. So I'm going up to Robin today. I noticed she had a big chest recipe for 5,000 gold. I actually went up to sell some basic resources just to get my gold up to 40,000. In order to get 40,000, I would have to dig into some of my basic resources, such as clay and wood and stone and things like that. The big chest I will purchase later on. Uh, it does basically give you much more space than that of a regular chest. I also noticed that she had all of the brazier recipes accessible. You didn't have to buy one, come back out of the menu and go back in to buy another. They were all there for the taking, which was great. So to cap me off at 40,000, I created some spring seeds from all of the forages I've been getting and I decided to send them to Pierre. Now you're probably wondering, why on earth am I not making tea saplings? And that's quite simple. Concerned Ape has nerfed the tea saplings. How dare he? You probably thought it would stop me, it would prevent me from getting to the desert to see that event on year one. But you cannot stop Gamer Gar, Concerned Abe. I am a 100 day machine. I can make money regardless of tea saplings or not. Anyways, back to the challenge. <laughs> so we finally unlocked the bus. We're now back in the mines. Met it down further, got the Firewalker boots. And here is a fabulous scene of Marlis working super hard. Fixing up the bus so we can get to the desert on day 15. I also got level 8 fish and I can now make a deluxe worm bin. This is actually a very overpowered machine. The next day, we go down to the desert. I'm going to swap in here a diamond for Triple Shot Espresso and a ruby for a spicy eel. There's tons of events going on here. What we have here now is basically a vendor that we can talk to every few in-game hours. We can choose either the chicken, the snail or the scorpion to see who's going to win the race. If we choose correctly we will get the main event resource, which is a Calico egg. And the more of those eggs that we get, the more items we can buy from the various vendors around the event. 
Here's just one of many vendors. He's selling mystery boxes, mummy mask, blue bows, all different types of clothes, mega bombs, lucky lunches. He's also selling a woodcutter's weekly skill book there, which gives us forging XP. We also had the traveling cart, but she was closed until noon, but that was just a regular traveling cart. We also had a scholar here who will take us on in a quiz. So for the first question, who runs the animal shop in Pelican Town? That was Marnie, simple. The next question though, what season is artichoke growing? I said fall, that was correct. And what season can you catch the squid? That was winter. All extremely simple questions. The last one was where you might catch lava eels. That was easily floor 100 in the mines. As first place, we get 50 calico eggs, which was pretty nice. This guy could send us home for 250 gold. It just doesn't make sense because the bus was literally right down there. <laughs> Willie had a quest to catch three sandfish and we would get more calico eggs for that. So I do spend some time fishing up the old sandfish here for good old Willie. Now this event spans across three whole days and the quest activities within the event do slightly change over the three days. So Willie would get me to catch something different the next day and something different on the third day. I did get very lucky though and I got a diamond from a treasure chest there and I could trade that in for another triple shot espresso if I want. There was also a chef that gave you an option to choose foods that he could make into a recipe for you. I chose the rare fruit for the first type and for the second type I'm going to go with the uncomfortably hot sauce because I am a huge fan of spicy foods in real life and as far as I'm concerned the spicier something is the better. <laughs> so I got a really cool cutting here and he's making the food for me. And it's actually going to give me a very powerful buff. And I can actually go into Skull Cavern with that. It will help me greatly. The food I got was called Rumpled Fruit Skin. And it gives me a plus 3 luck and a plus 1 to speed. That would be very helpful for Skull Cavern. We also had Shane as a vendor. He was selling pizzas, eggs, pepper poppers, things like that. The vendors change every single day. And sometimes you can actually even buy some of their weapons that were hidden in 1.5. You had to use the item spawner to get them. That was quite cool. There was also a clothes changing stall as well and I managed to get a full set of free clothes thanks to Emily. So it was a nice change of appearance. I got the camo shirt and the relaxed fit pants. I also came across another NPC called Cactus Man. He says that look in your eyes it says I need a cactus or I'm gonna burst. <laughs> Are you ready to welcome a new cactus into your life? I said yes of course. Great. Let's see. <laughs> and he gives me a smiley looking cactus. I thought it was hilarious. This one's a little shy. But I know you'll become friends in no time. Well, the shy ones are always the best, aren't they? So it was just a cactus decoration. There was then Skull Cavern quests, treasure hunt and deep dive. I decided to go with deep dive to see if I could reach level 30 of Skull Cavern. Now, it was 3.40pm during the day. I was being a bit over optimistic there. But there were these cool statues that were now in Skull Cavern. They only pop up for the event though. And they give you extra perks. Sometimes though, they could give you debuffs. But I got 50 eggs off that one. I managed to grab an auto grabber on floor 13. Talk about lucky. I can put that auto grabber now into my coop. It's going to be a game changer. I also got lots of additional calico eggs down here as well. What's best, I didn't even need a skull key to go in. The event just overrided that. So I got an egg rating of 10. The egg rating all depends on how far you get down. I didn't get down very far. I didn't have an optimal setup. But Gil did give me a prize. He gave me 25 calico eggs for the attempt, which was nice. I also got level 5 mining today, so I'm going to go with miner, plus 1 ore per vein. The next day there was a notice here saying I'm going to the festival today, so Pam wasn't driving the bus. Not to worry though, we can actually drive the bus ourselves. We do still have to pay 500 gold for the ticket though. It was back out to the desert for the second day of the event. This time, Willie tasked me with catching a scorpion carp. That wasn't much of an issue at all. Once I gave the scorpion carp into Willie, he gave me 50 calico eggs, which was great. I was now up on 261 eggs. Spoke to Marlin here as well to see what quests he had for the Skull Cavern dive. He had deep dive again, reached level 30, but he also had monster hunt. Slay 10 serpents. I go at monster hunt straight away because serpents are very common. And before you know it, you're going to have a serpent in your face in Skull Cavern, whether you like it or not. I tried to open up the trash can for more eggs, but Linus was already there before me. You just can't compete with him when it comes to trash cans, can you? The scholar had nothing else to say to me. I would have to wait a whole year before I could take on his quizzes again. We had new NPCs in the stalls. Abigail this time. We could purchase her bow and we could also purchase her weapon there, which is a level 8 dagger. Plus 4 crit chance. It's not bad, but I just didn't have the eggs for it. Caroline 
was trying to sell me some tea saplings. I said, no, sorry, Caroline, they've been nerfed. I want nothing more to do with you. Thanks for your service while it lasted, though. We had fun times indeed. It was back into the Skull Cameron, picked up the Dark Boots. That's actually an upgrade from the Firewalker Boots, especially in the Defense Department. One extra defense, I'll take that straight away. There was also a Calico Nose on the ground. We could mine these open for additional Calico Eggs that we could use with many of the merchants around the event area. I got very lucky today on floor 35, picked up a Prismatic Shard from Blown Open and Iridium Node. Today I got an egg rating of 20. I met it down to maybe floor... 30 something and Marilyn was fairly impressed with that so he gave me 100 calico eggs and he also gave me an extra reward as well he gave me a triple shot espresso level 4 forging I can now make a new item a mushroom log I'm telling you right now these things are insanely overpowered they're crazy good I also gonna get fighter because I got combat level 5 so I made some bombs today because for the last day I wanted to do pretty well in this cavern before we went back to our regular spring activities. It was time to go back to the desert and try our hand again at another Skull Cavern run. We're going to go at Monster Hunt again and try to slay 10 serpents. We're also going to get the chef to cook us up the exact same buff food as he done the last two times. So it's plus one to speed, plus three to luck. We're off to Skull Cavern. I got a hole here on floor six. I got down 15 levels. That's the best you can get from a hole. It was very nice to get that. Inside a treasure chest, I picked up another prismatic shard super lucky there's also a statue there as well that would give me a really cool buff it gave me a speed boost and that speed boost would last for the duration of the time i was in there with all of the calico eggs i've most of many i purchased all of the mystery boxes i also got some strawberry seeds as well and i got some other bits and bobs including a skill book i managed to find the mushroom cave it was, it was actually kind of hidden uh, it took me quite the exploration effort to find it inside was lots of different types of mushrooms four common mushrooms two red mushrooms i needed five of a mushroom type though to use that dehydrator that dehydrator will convert fruit into dried fruit you're going to get big profits from it and you do get a free one off demetrius if you choose the mushroom cave so it's just more perks to choose the mushroom cave you don't get it if you choose the bat cave i had 25 mystery boxes for clint to open what i got there was a mixed flower seed when you plant those, depending on the season, you'll get back flowers. You could, so because it's spring, you can get back tulips, for example, or jazzes. I got a book of mystery here. It's actually quite good. A slightly greater chance to find mystery boxes. And that is a book of power. So we can use that now to get a really powerful passive ability that we'll have for the rest of the game. So we just have to right click on the book and we've learned a new power. To check out our powers, we just have to go into this new UI screen we can highlight over the book and it will tell us what it's all about. A slightly greater chance to find mystery boxes. We also had the forest magic as well so we could read those Junimo community center requests. Back on the farm, we're going to plant down all of the mixed seeds we got from those mystery boxes. It does mean more money for us. Of course, we will have to water up the crops but not to worry. We will have quality sprinklers very soon. I was plugging away with all of the artifacts and minerals with Gunther. Because I got a lot of geodes out of the Skull Cavern, which was nice. It's time to go back to the desert today, and we're going to swap in our Prismatic Shard for a Galaxy Sword. And to get a Galaxy Sword this early is a game changer. We don't even have level 120 of the regular mines unlocked. So we're going to go back down to the regular mines now to make progress with a Galaxy Weapon, which is totally unheard of. But look, with new updates comes new opportunities, and... <laughs> It just makes for a really versatile play, which is what I love about this update. I also had some bombs too I was letting off, just to make faster progress in the mines. I wanted to get down to floor 120 as quickly as possible to get the skull key, so I could start doing skull cavern runs. I picked up the obsidian edge there on floor 90. Pales in comparison though to the galaxy sword, so I'll just sell that instead. I made 12,000 gold today, primarily from selling iridium bars that I got in skull cavern. They sell for a thousand gold a pop. Eventually, they will sell for 1500 gold once we get that lovely level 10 mining perk. Floor 100 got the star drop happy days, and we're still progressing even further. I came across a load of crates here, was getting more mystery boxes and stuff like that. Got down to floor 120, eventually picked up the skull key. We can now do skull cavern runs, which was nice. The next day, I got fined 1000 gold for passing out before I got to the farm because it was very late when I got the skull key. Not to worry though. Sometimes we do have to make sacrifices to make some decent progression. 
it was time to harvest some cauliflowers now. And I was going to keep one gold star cauliflower for the Lua in summer for that lovely friendship bonus. And I was going to keep one more for the Jody side quest because Jody will eventually ask me for a cauliflower. It was time to upgrade some tools. We're going to start with the copper pickaxe because it was just begotten to the point now where it was taking too many swings to break open regular nodes in the regular mines. And if I go into Skull Cavern with a regular pickaxe, it's just going to be painful. So Willy has a new bobber machine. It's absolutely amazing. At the moment, we have a few bobber styles we can select from. I'm going to go with the duck. I mean, it has to be the duck. It's absolutely one of the coolest bobbers there. For the rest of the challenge, you're going to see me fish with a cool duck bobber. I also purchased a pizza off Gus because I want to dance with someone for the flower dance event. And I feel like the best person now to do that with will be Shane. Because his birthday is coming up and I want to give him the pizza to get the bonus friendship points. I wanted to do it with Haley, but I forgot about her during the events over on the desert. So it's going to be Shane now who's going to pick up the pieces. <laughs> so this is going to get me a lot of friendship points with Shane because he loves pizza. And I just have to give him one or two more gifts to get him up to four hearts. So he'll dance with me during the flower dance event. I'm also going to fill up the farm now with kale, tons of kale. Because I'd like to go into summer with some decent money, especially for Starfruit and things like that. So I spent the whole day putting down kale, watering it up. And I also put five common mushrooms into this dehydrator. And it does take a full day for that dehydrator to work its magic. It is worth it though. You get back some nice profits. Outside of my lovely chicken's coop, there were trees and rocks and other debris. I decided to clear away all of the debris. I also decided to clear away the regular grass. So the special blue grass would expand itself. Because if they eat that, they get bonus friendship. Level 5 foraging, I'm going to go with Forester because we're not really using tea saplings at all. Trees drop 25% more wood. That will be needed, especially for kegs and whatnot later on in the video. The next day I picked up dried common mushrooms at 113 energy and 50 health. What I was curious about the most though was how much it was going to sell for. So I do sell it. I gave Shane a beer today and then I spoke to him and just by talking to him gave me just enough friendship points to push him up to four hearts which was great. I could now ask him to be my flower dance partner. I also had a look at Marnie's stock. She was selling new decorations here. Dog houses, cat trees, even a bird house. It was all really cool stuff. I had to buy some hay off Marnie because I didn't have a silo just yet and I was running out of hay. I will prioritise a silo eventually. It's time to get some chickens. Let the naming convention begin. And I'm going to name all the animals off of my channel members. So we have Dara and Pantox and Katie. <laughs> For the rest of the day, I'm just pulling up some fish to get more money. I also want to get my fishing skill to 10 so I can get it go off the legend before the season is finished with. So I got 325 gold from those dried common mushrooms. That is a profit, just so you know. Because if I sold those five mushrooms without processing them, I would have only got 200 gold. So I'm at 125 gold profit there from that. It was time to smelt some bars, go back in here to the coop, check up on our lovely mayonnaise collection. It was then off to Robin. I was going to get Robin to construct a silo here because hay is just too expensive early on in the game. And the silo is very cheap to make and it will save us tons of money. Got my copper pickaxe off Clint. But we're going to give in the axe now to upgrade to a copper axe because I wanted to get rid of all those tree stumps on the farm. And I also wanted to get my hands on some early hardwood. The bookseller was back in town. I had 6,000 gold. I purchased a skill book here just to get some fishing XP. Just to help me get up to level 10 fishing. Then went into the caves. I got the ghost fish. I got the stone fish. It was then off down and I got a cave jelly. That was my first cave jelly. I was trying to get the ice pip. But the cave jelly gives you plus one to luck. That's actually pretty cool. But I'm keeping all the jellies to make those lovely smoking machines that are on so we get the double value of the fish. I pulled up an ice pip which was nice and it was down to floor 100 to try to get lava eels. That wasn't happening today. I needed to get better gear for the lava eels. So I purchased an iridium rod with a trap bobber and I was finally able to get the lava eel then. I was just getting bad luck on the previous day. It just kept escaping me. With the lava eel caught, that was all of the cave fish done, including the cave jelly. I found another book of power here from a fishing treasure chest, Jewels of the Sea. Finding treasure chests has a chance to give you raw. And that raw is specific to what kind of fish you pulled up. So if you pulled up, we'll say a largemouth bass, you could potentially get largemouth bass raw, which is really nice. 
That means if you were to put up a lav eel, you could get lav eel row. And that stuff is actually quite profitable. Level 10 fishing, of course, we would get angler. Fish worth 50% more. And then it was pulling up lots of shoot-ups the next day from our farm. Thanks to our new type of flower mix seeds, which is really nice. So we're going to have to water up the crops. And then we are going to the flower dance. We're going to get the top of flowers recipe here. Because we will need all of the recipes. We will need to make everything to get perfection. I'm also going to get the rare crow as well. And it was time to boogie on down and show off my skills as the new queen of the flower dancers. The next day it was raining, got some more dried common mushrooms. I also got some coffee beans and some strawberries as well, which was nice. Put up some cauliflowers and we're off to Clint to get our copper axe back. We could now get our hands on some hardwood. It was then time to eat a dish of the seed that gives me plus three to fishing. And it was time to take on the legend fish himself. I actually managed to get it on the first attempt, which was nice. In my opinion, the legend is way easier than the glacier fish. I think, truly, the glacier fish is the hardest fish to get in the game. Even though the legend does spurt around quite a lot, it is quite contained, it's quite controlled compared to that of the glacier fish. With the legend caught, I wasn't going to sell it straight away. I wanted to smoke this thing up to see if it would actually double the value of that fish. For the rest of the day, I was just getting catfish because they're still quite profitable and I wanted loads of money going into summer. I went to Clint as well to get my pickaxe upgraded to a steel pickaxe. In my opinion, that's the minimum requirement for a Skull Cavern run, which would be a steel pickaxe. The next day, it was time to start making some quality sprinklers. For that, I needed some refined quartz. I also needed some iron and gold bars. The kale was ready to be harvested, so I'm going to get loads of money now from all this kale, and I'll be able to set up the farm then with sprinklers for a good summer production. I made lots of quality sprinklers today, 10 in total for now. I do end up making more though, and they're going to make life so much easier going forward. I didn't have the luxury of the UI info suite, so I actually had to focus here, putting down the sprinklers to make sure that they covered all of the spots and that they didn't overlap with each other. I also went to Pierre because it was his birthday. I gave him a kale and he was fairly happy with that. I then sold the rest of the kale to Pierre, bringing me up to 34,000 gold, which was really nice indeed. I decided to treat myself to the last backpack upgrade so I'm not throwing away valuable items. It was then finally time to make the fish smoker. I had all of the cave jellies cut just to make one and I had some hardwood as well from breaking open some stumps with my copper axe. It actually accepted the legend fish, so it's going to be very interesting to see if it will actually double in value. If it does, then the whole fishing mechanic of Sergio Valley will have dramatically changed and we'll be able to use that smoking machine to make some serious money later on. For the rest of the day, we're running around the farm, got some unmilled rice there, and I was just collecting some hay as well from my silo to keep my fabulous chickens happy. I try my best to ignore the bluegrass just so that can expand more. And there we have it, a smoked legend. 22,500 gold. It's absolutely incredible. Incredible profits. It was back to Robin now the next day. It was time to construct another building. This time I wanted to go with the big coop. I wanted to expand the animal kingdom on our lovely 1.6 farm. Not only will this give us a population of up to 8 animals, but it can also take ducks. Got my steel pickaxe off Clint. Happy days. It was time then to upgrade our axe to a steel axe. This just means that I can go to a lot more areas now around the map, including the secret woods, where you've got lots of tree stumps inside there. It was time for a Skull Cavern run. I got six spicy eels, and I just spent the whole day in the Skull Cavern, just blowing up ores and whatnot. Now, I didn't make it down too far today, but you have to start somewhere. I did, however, come across some really nice resources. I got a few bits of Iridium ore, not a huge amount. And I got one or two treasure rooms as well. I picked up a few small bits in those. Nothing major though. The serpents were really nice to kill because they were dropping mystery boxes and things like that. I came to this room here, number 48. And I kid you not, I had to break open almost every single node in this room to finally get an exit. Now in all fairness, I got a hole that dropped down 11 floors. But it was just a kind of a bad day in the Skull Cavern. I did get the final dwarf scroll though. So I can now finally get Dwarvish Translations Guide. And that dwarf is really handy because we can buy bombs off him as well if we need bombs going forward. It was time to go back to Morris. I had 21,000 gold. I wanted to unlock the minecarts because the fast travel was just really screwing me over right now and it's a great time saver. 
I also picked up a quest here for Clint. He wanted me to mine up 15 coals to aid an understanding of local minerals. I didn't care too much about the coals. What I did care about was that fabulous prize ticket. So it was straight down into the regular mines, killing dust sprites to pick up coal. And it was going to be another lovely prize ticket off Clint. Back to the ticket machine to get another lovely reward. This time, it was going to be 15 of those flower seeds. But I just needed two more tickets. I could get that lovely iridium cup of tea to see what it was all about. We were now finally in the season of summer. And as we can see, the bookseller comes twice in a summer. We had the Luau event and the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies. But there was a new event, the Trout Derby, which took place on the 20th and the 21st. So it's going to be very interesting to see what that event is about and what kind of rewards we can get from it. First things first though, it was back to Clint to get our Steel Axe. And then it was off to the desert just to buy some star fruit from Sandy. But before that, we had a look around and I got a new item here. Summer Squash Seeds. And this is basically the equivalent of the carrots we got in spring. Because we're now in summer, we get squash seeds instead. And they take a few days to grow, but they would produce afterwards until the season's over with. So it's really cool. Sandy was also selling mannequins here, male and female. And we could put hats and all sorts of clothes on them. And it's going to make for a really cool decoration item. We could set those up all around the farm. Now, I had some money. So I was able to get 69 starfruit seeds here in total. That wasn't too bad now going into the summer. Obviously, I have done much better in the past, but because there's so many new updates now to experience, I didn't really want this to be a super, you know, money run. I want it to be more of a varied run, just so I get to experience all of the content. It was then time to do more fishing. Summer is here, and all of the new fish need to be picked up for the fishing collection. The Super Cucumber is a really good fish for profits. I also had to go at the legendary fish of Summer, the Crimson Fish. Ah, he didn't give me too much trouble. I will smoke this fish though and get double the profit for this one. It's going to be really nice. I did smoke a few fish. As we can see, the smoked crimson fish, double the value, almost 6,800 gold. And a smoked super cucumber coming in at 1,100 gold. That's not bad at all. And it just goes to show how overpowered this fish smoker is going to be. So I got some other fish goodies today. The tuna, tilapia. The red mullet. I also got the puffer fish as well. All needed for the fishing collection, of course. I also decided to go into the secret woods here and have a gander. So I broke away the big tree stump there. And the great thing about the secret woods is that these tree stumps will still spawn every single day. So we're never going to run out of hardwood. I also got the wood skip here too. The wood skip is a fish native to the secret woods. So we need that for the fishing collection. It was time to make a tree farm using acorns because I needed to get oak resins to make kegs down the road. I managed to hoe up a skill book, the Stardew Valley Almanac. And we just had to read this to get some farming XP, which is really nice. So it's just nice to pick up books like that and to get some bonus XP. I think it just makes the game way more fluid. I went to Robin here as well. It was time to construct a fish pond. The reason for this was I was just basically investigating to see if I could put those jellies into the fish pond to get back loads of jellies to make loads of the of the smokers for the fish. So Willie was selling super cucumber bait today and I purchased all of this because super cucumber is one of the most profitable fish in summer. So I'm going to put that bait into my rod to see if I can get tons of super cucumbers. And I did. The bait is actually really effective. So Robin is making a fish pond there but I'd made a mistake. I put the construction beside my orange tree sapling and now my orange tree sapling is not going to grow, so I'm going to have to move that fish pond when it's fully built. I got Clint to break up a more geode though, because I really wanted to make some more progress here with Gunther, and the progress is coming along quite well. I do have a lot of minerals now, and artifacts handed in from doing the Skull Caverns, getting geodes and fishing. I managed to get to Dorado today, and that's actually a very rare fish to get in Cindersap Forest. There was a quest here to go to the local mines and kill four of those crab creatures, I didn't care too much for the quest itself, but when I saw the prize ticket, I just couldn't help myself. It was straight down into the mines on a crab onslaught. The next day was a very weird day. The screen was a bit kind of green. And when I clicked on the weather report, it was just loads of dots on the telly. I went outside to this green strange rain and I noticed that there was weeds littered all over my farm. Some weeds were small, some were really big. 
But there was also weird looking trees on my farm as well, and I was very curious about this. I didn't know if it was a super rare event, or if you were guaranteed to get this event on the 5th. I also picked up a mossy seed, and it says this can be planted to grow rare and wild trees. So I was actually quite interested in this. And I always thought that that was going to be some sort of a, a star drop tree, but no, it's to grow some sort of a, a, a rare and wild tree. I was getting loads of moss from wiping out these weeds and whacking the trees, and moss is needed for a few recipes in the game. So I went into the saloon here to talk to a few people, and Mary Lewis had just got the phone with the governor. Apparently this red is supposed to be completely harmless, just an unusual phenomenon of nature. Still, some of the townsfolk are panicking, which is never good. I spoke to a few more people just to get the dialogue. Gus says, I saw their weather report, and he wants to know if there's monsters out there. Willie says, oh, I hope these weird rains don't bother the fish. It could ruin me life. All Willie thinks about is fish, in all fairness. Willie needs to expand these horizons. Pam thinks it's a sign from the Almighty we're doomed. <laughs> Pam can be so funny at times. Time to speak to someone with a calm mind. Linus says, all these strange trees will be gone tomorrow. It's one of the mysteries of nature. And that confirmed it. I had one day to make the most of this weird weather condition. Demetrius was in a hazmat suit. Don't mind me, Gamer Gar, I'm just collecting some samples. This may be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. If you see my wife, can you tell her I'm okay? I came across another tree here. I cut it down straight away. And I got fiddlehead ferns from it. So interesting. The wizard says, Though the unusual rains may be alarming, there is nothing to fear on this day. In fact, it is a day of great joy for many living things. So, that was nice to hear. The wizard would have some knowledge about that as well. The next day my trees went back to normal, all of the weeds disappeared. I did however have two new items. I had tons of moss and I had mossy seeds and I planted those seeds and I will put fertilizer on those once I managed to get that from the foraging skill. So this is my current tree farm. Also I believe that that green rain acted as some sort of a fertilizer because some of my trees grew very quickly. So I think the green rain also helps all of your trees grow very fast. It was finally time to get this Iridium Tea. But in fact, it wasn't called Iridium Tea. It was called Star Drop Tea. At least I was half right. A very special gift that would delight anyone. It's basically a universal loved gift that anybody loves. I also pulled up the octopus today. It was quite a catch. So I tried to see if I could put a jelly into the fishing pond that wasn't letting me. That was a huge bummer. I really hope there's some sort of a way that we can farm tons of these jellies so we can make loads of fish smoking machines so we can double the price of loads of fish at once. So I just put the octopus in there instead, just to do something with the fish pond. Octopus row isn't bad when it comes to selling. It was time for another lovely community development project. This time we're going to go with the bridge and travel to the quarry to see if 1.6 added anything new to the quarry. Morris is working super hard here with his co-workers fixing up the bridge. The next day we start by pulling up some lovely coffee beans we also get our first summer squash 130 energy and 50 health i will sell that though to see how profitable it is it's probably going to be the same as the carrot though i also went to robin i'm going to get her to build a barn so we can put cows and everything else inside it linus says how did the moss harvest go he he my bed is a lot softer now you gotta hand it to minus he'll make the best out of any situation it was then time to smell some bars i had a chat with a traveling cart lady today I'm going to purchase a rare seed from her so I can get that star drop in fall. So that's a no-brainer right there. She also sold a retro catalogue for 111,000 gold. I might purchase that later on if I end up with tons of money. I spent a good portion of today just breaking down wood. I finally got level 7 foraging to bring on the tree fertilizer. The quarry had some new nodes. It had some coal nodes. This was a much needed feature of the game. Some sort of a node that gave coal. It was always really hard to get coal. Now it's a bit easier. When I went into the quarry cave, though, I noticed a massive rock here. And I couldn't actually break it up with my steel pickaxe. What was inside at the time, I didn't know. But I got really excited and I just wanted to upgrade my pickaxe as quickly as possible to see what was in there. I tried a bomb. It didn't work. I tried the one just up above as well before I got the golden sight. Wasn't happening. I picked up the golden sight. Now, just in case there's some sort of secret or trick behind it, I equipped the goal inside. I just swung at it, just to see if anything would happen. But no, it was an actual rock, and I needed a stronger pickaxe to break it open. I went to Gus here now, it was his birthday. I gave him the star drop tea, and he absolutely loved it. 
It put him right up to three hearts. That was pretty nice indeed. It was then back to Clint. It was time to upgrade my tools. I was going to get the gold pickaxe there as fast as I could, just so I can venture further into that quarry cave. So I made tons of worm bins there. You're probably asking why I'm making worm bins. And the answer is simple, to upgrade them to deluxe worm bins. These deluxe worm bins will now generate deluxe bait every single day, which is absolutely amazing. Deluxe bait is just so good. A bigger fishing bar and fish will bite at a faster rate. What more could you ask for? I finally got level 8 farming. I could now make kegs. Praise Yoba. It was time to make some serious money. But we had to wait for the starfruit to come to fruition first. The next day I got lots of deluxe bait which was nice. I also made loads of tree fertilizer. Just to expedite the growth on all of my ever growing trees. I also noticed that a lot of my trees had some green texture on them. And if I whack those trees with my sword I'll actually get back moss. Which is going to be really helpful. I also visited the bookseller today, good old Marcelo's books. I had 17,000 gold, so I wanted to get the price catalogue, which would finally show me what everything is worth, instead of having to sell it and then checking the prices out the next day. It was just a total game changer right there. A new book of power has been learned, that's the price catalogue. You also notice too that I got another book to the right, that's the Monster Compendium. Just so you know, all that book of power does is sometimes monsters will drop additional loot. I picked up the gold pickaxe off Clint today, it was time to go straight back into the quarry to see what secrets lay ahead. I noticed a new enemy here, some sort of a weird looking skeleton. I'm pretty sure they pop up in the hardened versions of the mines, but he only dropped bone fragments and that was kind of it, didn't drop anything else. There wasn't anything else really in this expanded part of the quarry cave, it was just, it was just an expansion with more nodes and whatnot. If anybody has figured out any sort of additional secrets with the quarry cave, please let me know. I have a sneaking suspicion that there's more secrets to be had inside those two rooms. I got extremely lucky today. I managed to get a magic rock candy off a floaty skull. This is something like a 0.1% drop rate chance to get a magic rock candy off a floaty skull. And it actually happened to me and I had footage to show it. I was so happy with that, it's probably one of the rarest things that can happen to you inside this game, is to get a magic rock candy off a floaty skull. My octopuses wanted refined quartz, who am I to say no? It was back to fabulous Georgia to get another project completed. This time we had a choice between the greenhouse and the panning, we are going to go with the panning and what's great about this is that we can actually upgrade the pan now to make it better. It was Maru's birthday, she got a battery pack, more friendship points for Maru. We are going for perfection after all, so it is in our best interest to capitalise on those birthdays for the bonus friendship points. Maris surely must be the most hard-working man in Stardew Valley, besides myself of course. <laughs> it was time for the Luau. We finally get to use our ghost our cauliflower. That's going to give us the best result with the governor, and that is going to give us an absolute ton of friendship points with all of the Stardew Valley NPCs. Mayor Lewis is very happy with it as well. The next day, it was time to put a tapper on this new tree, but the tree wouldn't take the tapper. So we couldn't tap this tree for any sort of resource. But this tree wasn't useless. This tree will occasionally generate moss that we would get to collect. So it's basically a moss tree. Back down into the mines, and we are collecting iron ores. We're gearing up for a big skull cavern run. So I wanted coal, I wanted iron ores to make bombs. I went to Gus, I purchased loads of salads. So I can sustain myself for big skull cavern runs as well. And I then went to the dwarf. I wanted to get the dwarvish safety manual book of power. Bombs deal 25% less damage to us. That's a game changer right there. But I couldn't afford it. Because I spent most of my money on salads and whatnot. I do get it later on though. I went back into the quarry. Just to see if anything new would happen. A new enemy spawned here. But this is just another regular enemy from the hardened versions of the mines. Nothing special going on there. I made more bombs today, 51 in total thanks to all of the iron ores that I gathered in the regular mines. I then took the magic rock candy I got from the floaty skull. It was time to do a serious skull cavern run and what a run it was. So I got down to floor 17, picked up a white turban. It's actually one of my favourite hats and I equipped that straight away just to kind of change up my style a bit. I got an ambush floor on floor 32. Normally I do skip past the ambush floors. But I really wanted a dinosaur egg, and these dinosaurs also count towards monster eradication goals. So I said, you know what, 
let's just wipe them all out. I managed to get another auto grabber here when I got close to floor 100. Super lucky, I can put that into the barn when I fill it up with barn animals. I passed out on floor 97, I was so close to get to floor 100. But it was a good run, and I got level 10 mining. We're going to go with blacksmith. Metal bars worth 50% more, that'll be a game changer for those iridium bars. The next day, I pulled up some starfruit, I also pulled up some melons. All that starfruit now can be converted into starfruit wine. But I wanted to see what else the 1.6 had in store. So instead, I'm just going to sell all the starfruit directly to Pierre. Because I just wanted to get into Ginger Island. I know I could have made way more money if I just waited a few more days. But I'm very impatient. It was time to unlock the greenhouse. And now I can finally go to Ginger Island and see what updates Concerned Ape has put inside there. I also got the safety manual, Book of Power. I'm also going to pick up the rare crow here as well off the dwarf. We will need all of the rare crows to get the deluxe rare crow, which is needed for perfection. I smelled some iridium bars and did some fishing up beside the adventurer's guild. Here's a great scene of a raccoon running away from a construction site, but Morris is working hard fixing up my greenhouse. Thank you very much, Morris. The next day was the big celebration day. We have completed all of the current Georgia community developments. We get the soda machine. The soda machine is now actually quite good because the Georgia Cola gives you a speed buff. It's actually not a bad machine at all. The next day, I'm putting down some electrical rods. They're going to give me some battery packs when we get to stormy weather. I'm also going to get some hardwood here. I need to repair the hull of the ship so I need lots of hardwood. I checked out the mushrooms. I got a few purple mushrooms. I'm actually saving up all those different mushroom types to see how profitable the dried mushroom variant is. Gunther visited me the next day. He's going to give me now the key to the sores so we can get down to Krobus so we can see if Krobus has any new and exciting items for us since 1.6 released. I'm also going to make some kegs here. I'm just making nine kegs at the moment, but I do end up making a lot more. I'm just going to put the kegs inside of my coop. I managed to keep a few starfruit aside to put into these kegs, so these starfruit will pay off big time. Starfruit wine is of course one of the most profitable artisan goods in the game. 200 hardwood for the hull repair, Five battery packs to repair the ticket system and five iridium bars to repair the anchor. So the boat was now fully fixed up. We can now venture forth to Ginger Island. We also unlocked the door to the stores. We had a chat with Krobus here and he had a few new things. He has a wizard catalog, butterfly powder, sprinkle on a pet to remove them from your farm and it's permanent. Who would ever want to use butterfly powder? Shame on you if you use it. Shame on you. <laughs> It was time to get that juicy star drop though and increase our maximum energy. I managed to pull up the decorative trash can out of the fountain here because I just think it's a really cool decoration. I then went back down to the regular mines and was farming some iron ore for the quest for Clint. But the iron ore will come in handy anyway to make kegs and other stuff down the road. So I managed to get a very rare item here from a trash can and it was the garbage hat. And it's just such a rare hat to get, I just had to show it in my footage. I have opened up hundreds and hundreds of trash cans and this is something that never comes out. So I was quite fortunate to get that. Here's a cool scene of Robin and Willie fixing up the boats. So we can now do Ginger Island runs. I got my Iridium pickaxe today and it couldn't have come a moment sooner because of Volcano Dungeon. It's quite a difficult dungeon to do if you don't have an Iridium pickaxe. So we're now taking the boat down to Ginger Island. What new mysteries await us? The first thing we need to do anyway is gather all of the golden walnuts so we can make some decent progression on Ginger Island. And these golden walnuts are scattered all over the map. The first one is more or less a freebie given to you just before you get to Leo's house. But we also get three tent kits and tent kits are really useful. If you put down a tent you can go to sleep straight away. You would wake up the next day in exactly the spot you put down that tent. It's so good. There's a secret golden walnut just down there to the south of the south pedestal. There's also a golden walnut in the tree there inside Leo's house. We're going to talk to this parrot and open up some of the Ginger Island map. There's golden walnuts that can be hauled up all over the place. I'm just going to show you a few here. It's just basically a quick tactic on how we can get the house the first day we come here. There's also a Georgia parrot here. If we click on him, it wants 1,200,000 gold to find golden walnuts. Now, just so you know... That price scales with how many walnuts you've currently found. So the more golden walnuts you find, the less you have to pay that parrot to find the rest. It's, it's actually really handy if you're very close to getting 100 golden walnuts 
and you just want to get into Key's secret walnut room, if you have a few hundred thousand gold on you, you can just pay that. It'll find all of them for you then, and you can just go get on with the rest of the Ginger Island. I do not recommend it for players new to Ginger Island. I would highly recommend that you seek out the walnuts on your own and just don't buy your way to success because it is quite the experience finding all the golden walnuts the way they're originally meant to be found. So this is just a mini puzzle here. You can hit him with a watering can too if you have an upgraded watering can. So we upgrade the house, which means we don't need to use the tent kits. We can sleep here tonight, wake up the next morning. But we do go back to Sarju Valley because I wanted to look at the books again and I had some money here. So I purchased the book here that increases my movement speed. That's a new book of power. I go back to Digital Island. I spent half the day on this corset, corset mini game. It took me about 20 attempts to get it right. Oh, if Concerned Ape is listening, please make that event easier, please. It was then off doing a volcano run. And there's some really good stuff you can get in the volcano. We do need golden walnuts from here though. There's five you can get from killing monsters. There's a few you can get from the chests. There's five you can get from mining open ores. And there's five from the dwarvish caches. The dwarf vendor on floor five sells the diamond hunter book of power. All stones have a chance to drop a diamond when mined by hand. That means if you're using your pickaxe, not using bombs, you have a chance to get a diamond. It's quite the book of power, but you need 10 diamonds to buy it. So we will save up and come back to that later. There was a strong windstorm during the night. Never got that before. Didn't really know at the time what it meant, but it does open up a really cool and cute quest line for us that we get to experience soon. So we're just making our way now to the Volcano Dungeon again. Want to get up to the forge this time. And I have a lot of bombs here on me. So we're getting lots of golden walnuts. We're also getting journal scraps as well. And some of those journal scraps are important to get more golden walnuts. We get a prismatic shard getting up to floor 10. And our first enchant is going to be on our galaxy sword. We get bug killer. I was hoping for crusader. But bug killer isn't bad. It does mean we can one shot those armored bugs in the skull caverns. It's now time to free Professor Snail. This will unlock his archaeology side quests. We have to go and find all of the fossils around Ginger Island to get loads of um, golden walnuts. We're going to do his survey report. Luckily, Concerned Ape has not changed any of the answers here to the two questions that are asked. Still the exact same answers as before. He did, however, nerf one artifact in particular. It's now super simple again. It's going to surprise you. But before we get to that, it is time to go back to Sarju Valley. The annual show derby has begun. So we're going to collect our battery packs, pet our dog, and we're going to go down to Cindersap Forest. And basically every time we catch a rainbow trout, we have a chance to get a golden tag. The more golden tags we get, the better prizes we get off the merchant. That's basically the whole event. You could spend the whole day here fishing up rainbow trouts. When we click on get reward, then we're going to get numerous rewards. We can get tents, we can get diamonds, we can get other bits and pieces, but a diamond is probably the best thing you can get. The quality sprinkler isn't bad. But if you're big on farming, by the time you get to the more or less end of summer, you don't really need extra quality sprinklers. Nonetheless though, it was a cool event. I got a bucket hat, which was a new hat item. And so I decided to put it on straight away to see what it looked like. And I think it does look kind of stylish, if I do say so myself. It was then back to the dwarf, it was his birthday, gave him a lemon stone. He was very happy with that, get my extra friendship points there. It was then time to check out this new quest line. I noticed when I went back down to Cinesap Forest, there was a question mark above this tree stump. When I clicked on it, it said the old tree is gone. However, with a hundred pieces of hardwood, this could be fixed up. I was so excited. I got my axe straight away and it was off, going all through Stardew Valley, getting all of the hardwood I could. When I was finished with all of the stumps, I went over to Ginger Island. There was loads of hardwood over here to be gotten. So getting 100 pieces was super simple because of all the hardwood you can get on Ginger Island. I fixed up the tree stump straight away and I turned it into a small cute little house. It even had a window and a light on inside and a little chimney. <laughs> it was the cutest thing ever. And I wondered to myself, who's going to move into this house? What's going to happen? I was just so excited. It was then time to get lots of starfruit wine. This was sell for loads of money. But before I sold it, I got level 10 farming. So we're going to go to Artisan, so I get 40% more for the wine. I met some Iridium Sprinklers today. I'm going to put those down inside the greenhouse. And I'm going to use the greenhouse primarily for bits and bobs. Maybe I'll put some staff root here in fall. Might put some other stuff in here as well. 
but it took me a while to put down those sprinklers because I didn't have the UI info suite mod activated. But I think I did a pretty good job. I hoed up the place and then I planted some more starfruit seeds I purchased off Sandy here. I got 102 in total, which wasn't too shabby at all. There was a little bit of a patch left over, but that wasn't a bad thing. I could put other stuff to fill up that patch. A raccoon moved into the house. He says, hungry, need fish. <laughs> and he was looking for five cockles and a smoked tilapia. Not to worry, I was on it straight away. Now, I did need one or two more cockles, so I put down some um, fishing traps there to get that. I did go back to him, though, with the tilapia. I got that very easy enough, and that was an iridium quality. Didn't make a difference to him, though. I just had to wait for the cockles in the meantime. So it was like a mini community center, but just doing it with a raccoon instead. I wonder, is he a Cousins of Rocket? I wonder, does Concerned Ape like watching Guardians of the Galaxy, and that's where he got inspiration to put a raccoon down there? Who knows? <laughs> I finally gave in the cockles. He says, thanks, Bobo. Take this. I was rewarded with 25 broccoli seeds. And I figured these were similar to the carrot seeds and the summer squash seeds, but you just plant these in fall. And it would just give you back broccoli, which is really cool. Who doesn't love a good plate of boiled broccoli, am I right? Or steamed broccoli. <laughs> I got some catfish today. It was Willie's birthday. He loves catfish. More friendship points there for Willie. I then decided to put some of my many coffee beans into the cakes to get back some coffees i could turn those into the triple shot expressos i also put down some more tree seeds here as well to get some hardwood in the future and i put the broccoli inside my greenhouse because i wanted to see if it was going to be the same as the carrots and the summer squash level 8 foraging i can now make the survival burger but more importantly the tent kit i can tell you right now the tent kit is going to be very important for highly successful skull cavern runs in the future because it was Thursday, Sandy was selling the Deluxe Speedgrow for 80 gold a pop. I purchased loads and put that down in the greenhouse later. I went to Robin. It was time to construct another farm building. This time, we'll go with the big barn so I can put even more barn animals inside. I went back to the greenhouse with my Deluxe Speedgrow and I'm going to put this on everything. It's just going to dramatically speed up the starfruit because I wanted to convert that into starfruit wine to get more money. The more money I get, the more I can do. I'm going to give Clint my axe upgrade to a gold axe because I'm cutting down an awful amount of trees. I need wood for so many things. It won't hurt to have a good axe to do that. I'm now on the quest to get all of the artifacts needed for Professor Snail's side quest. I also fished up a blue discus there as well. That's one of the fish needed for the fishing collection. I managed to get the fossilized spine too, which is needed for Professor Snail's quest. Look at this. I managed to get a snake vertebrae from just mining open stone. I actually couldn't believe it when it popped out. Snake vertebrates are now super easy to get. They used to be insanely hard to get back in the day. Back in the 1.5 days, you had to hold up out of the ground that was just so rare. It's now super easy to get. I also got another golden wallet down there with a pearl, and I also managed to fish up the lionfish too, which is needed for the fishing collection, along with the snake skull for Professor Snail's side quest. So I had enough golden walnuts assembled where I could fish up the beach area here. And now, loads of NPCs would come over from Stardew Valley and visit, including Gus. We need Gus to come here to get a recipe off him. I got access to a new area where I fished up a golden walnut. You can hoe up another one just outside there. And there's a sneaky one inside the pirate's cove here, just down at the bottom right. Also inside the pirate's cove, there's a fish we need. It's known as the stingray. We need that for the fishing collection. I also got the mummified frog from whacking open the weeds. And I also started the gem bird puzzle as well. We put an aquamarine there because that came off the south gem bird. So that aquamarine goes into the south pedestal. The gold pickaxe off Clint. I also got him to break open some golden coconuts because I needed the fossilized skull for Professor Snail's side quest. And I got that no problem at all. It was then back to Ginger Island and I managed to pan up the fossilized tail. And that was the last item needed to complete Professor Snail's archaeology side quest. And I completed it in record time because of how easy it is now to get those snake vertebrates. I got lots of golden wallets as a reward along with a banana and a mango sapling. I will need a banana for a special quest later on to give to the gorilla to get more golden walnuts. You can also get up to five golden walnuts from doing farming on Ginger Island. And here's one for you. Concerned Ape has now put in a change where if you sight the way crops, you can also get golden walnuts that way as well. You don't have to just pull up crops out of the ground anymore. 
So it was back to the volcano rungs to get more gold and walnuts. I picked up a soul sapper ring there. In all fairness, it's a horrible ring. Because by the time you get to Ginger Island, energy just isn't a problem anymore. So I think it's probably one of the most useless rings in the game. I did, however, put three rubies into my galaxy sword, increasing its damage output. It's now way stronger. We are now approximately halfway through the video. So if you're still watching, consider liking and subscribing to the channel if you like 100 day content. We're now moving into fall. Let's take a look at the calendar. As we can see, we still have the Spirit Eve's event. We have the Sarge Valley Fair, but the bookseller will now visit on the 4th and the 12th. And I didn't see any other sort of new events added to fall, except for the bookseller. So I'm going to use all of my money here and purchase 134 pumpkin seeds. Pumpkins, in all fairness, do sell for quite a lot of money. They don't compare to starfruit, but they're still all right. And we spend a good portion of today watering up these pumpkins and planting them. We're also going to visit the raccoon. He says, now maybe I find a wife. <laughs> well, I wish you the best of luck there, buddy. You can do it. I went down to the sores, totally forgot about the mutant carp. So I fished that up straight away. I didn't stop there though. I went inside the mutant bug lair and I fished up the slime jack. I got a first catch on that, which was nice. I also picked up the dark talisman because I wanted to see if the magical ink terminal had some extra items. I also put up the angler as well, which is the fall legendary fish. A new baby lizard has hatched thanks to the dinosaur egg I put into the incubator. We're now going to give it a name. We're going to call it Bonkers Busy, our new fabulous dinosaur. I'm also going to get some gold star mayonnaise because the chickens now produce high quality eggs and the gold star mayonnaise will sell for quite some money. I smoked the angler and the mutant carp. It was a nice bit of money coming in there now to start to fall. I was really happy with that. 6300 for the mutant carp and almost 4800 for the angler. I got the ossified blade here from a mystery box and that blade wasn't actually introduced in 1.5. It was one of those mythical weapons, you know. You could spawn it in with the item spawner but you couldn't officially get it. Now we can. Is that a bad weapon? It's a level 6 sword. It would be very overpowered if you got that in early spring. You know, to have such a beast of a weapon in the early days. But I had a galaxy sword, so I was just going to sell it off to Marlin. It did look really cool though. The ossified blade. It was now time to get the frog to inspect some crops to get more golden walnuts. He'll give us 5 for the melon and he'll give us 5 for the wheat. I didn't have any garlic on me, and I haven't got any garlic yet for any of the monsters in the Skull Caverns, so we will have to wait to get the final five from him down the road. So I gave Penny a sandfish for her birthday, and she was delighted with that. We might consider marrying Penny this time around. It was also time for the uh, community quests. Normally I would jump at community cleanup, because I could use it to abuse tea saplings. Because they were nerfed, I'm going with fragments of the past. Because the tea saplings now only sell for 250 gold. They don't sell for 500 gold anymore. I also purchased the big chest recipe off Robin. I'm going to make that now. It's so handy. You can place the big chest directly on your small chest and it will absorb all of the loot in the small chest. So you don't have to take all of the items out of the small chest and then put it into the big chest. It was so handy. Unfortunately, the big chest knocked my small chest away and I couldn't pick it up and my OCD was just killing me. I do eventually pick it up in the future. One way or another, we will get that small chest. Don't you worry, folks. We'll get it. So the broccoli has fully grown. It's time to harvest it to see what it's all about. The broccoli is quite similar to the carrot and the summer squash in terms of value and how much energy and health it's going to give. It's just a, something you can hope out of the ground in fall, similar to spring and summer. I made some preserved jars today. I also made some rustic floors and some stone floors because I wanted to do up the farm a little bit. I wanted to put down some sort of a path in the farm just to make it look like a decent looking farm aesthetic is important it was time to experiment with the broccoli i'm going to put it inside the preserve jars i'm also going to put it inside the kegs just to see what the value of it is like when it's processed you know if, if it's any good if it's worth capitalizing on if it's worth exploiting so we're back to ginger island and i figured out the gem puzzle here i i had two gem birds to go but I just started putting in random gems that I got the combination correct. And I got back five golden walnuts there, no problem at all. I also put up an ostrich egg here in the golden walnut. And because I have the ostrich incubator from doing Professor Snail's quest, I could now put ostriches on my farm, if I so wished. I went down into the regular mines today just to farm some iron ores because I wanted to make more bombs. I wanted to do another skull cavern run. Killing the skeletons isn't bad either because we do have to 
complete all the monster eradication goals. The book collector has come back. I had 29,000 gold. So I wanted to purchase something now that would really help me along with progression. Way of the Wind Part 2 was 35,000 gold. And it would give me an even greater movement speed forever. I really wanted that. I just needed a few extra thousand gold. So I sold Pierre <laughs> 999 coffee beans. Like, to be honest with you, I'm not going to use all those. I'm not going to process those into coffee because I can just convert diamonds into triple shot espressos if I want to. So I sold him all the coffee beans. I had 44,000 gold and I purchased a book of power to further increase my movement speed. Nice one. That was Way of the Wind Part 1 and Way of the Wind Part 2 collected. I gave the henchman here some void mayonnaise so he would let me into the shack. I just wanted to pick up the magical ink and use it to activate the terminal. I wanted to see if the 1.6 added any new structures to the game. I also noticed a new structure here in the wizard's basement that says a reptile of unknown origins. And I'm wondering now if that has some sort of a function. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments if that has some sort of a function. Looking at the magical ink terminal here, it has the same unusual stuff. It has the obelisks, the gold clock and the junimos. The raccoon finally found himself a wife. Congratulations, raccoon. And the wife vendor sells carrot seeds, summer squash seeds, broccoli seeds and powder melon seeds. What's interesting here is these powder melon seeds can be used in winter. So we can now farm properly in winter. We can use powder melon seeds. And all we need for the powder melon seeds are just two pine cones. For one, it's easy to get pine cones. We had a chat with the raccoon. He needed more food. He wanted dried coconuts and blackberry jelly. The coconuts and jelly would be simple. Blackberries are littered all over the ground in fall. And the coconuts, we can just head on off to the desert to get those. I also made some crystallariums. And I purchased some powder melon seeds off of the fabulous raccoon's wife. 32 in total. I'm going to put those down in the greenhouse straight away. For the rest of the day, I was just cutting down trees, getting wood. I was also wanted to get more pine cones because I wanted to get more powder melon seeds. I was getting moss as well, which is coming handy later on. The next day, I got my dried coconuts and I just had to wait now for the blackberry jelly. That could take some time to process. I got my octopus row. I was also collecting my lovely deluxe bait. I decided to make loads of bombs because I'm gearing up now for another skull cavern run. I went back down to the um, ginger island. And I'm trying to get bone fragments here. The reason why I'm getting bone fragments is because I took on a community quest to collect a hundred bone fragments for Gunther. So we're just going between the skeletons and the ginger island. It was Elliot's birthday. I gave him a lobster because he loves those. That was nice friendship points with Elliot. I purchased the triple shot espresso recipe off Gus as well. So I could convert my hard earned coffees into triple shot espressos. I'm also giving Robin love gifts. I need to get her the six hearts to learn the flute block. So I can get more golden walnuts over on Ginger Island. My sweet gem berry was finally ready. It can be grown in a garden pot which is nice. That means you can grow it any season of the year indoors. And all of the starfruit was good to go as well. That would all be turned into starfruit wine. I went to the secret woods with my sweet gem berry. And the statue here. He gave me another star drop which was nice. I'm going to put loads of powder melon seeds now inside the greenhouse. To see what they look like and how well they sell for. I gave Gunther his 100 bone fragments. I'm going to get rewarded now at 3,500 gold for that. He'll also send me on the, um, the bone mill as well the next day. And I also get a prize ticket. What other goodies can we get from Mayor Lewis's prize machine? I'm going to get a bed today, but the next prize is really good. It's four mushroom logs. I was really curious as to what that book was with the love heart on it. I knew it was a book of power, but I didn't know at the time what it actually done. So I picked up another help wanted quest because it was a prize ticket in the mix. I just had to get 15 coal ores and it was super simple to do because I had the quarry unlocked. It would take me record time to get those 15 coal pieces. I also picked up a book here as well called Jack Be Nimble, Jack Be Thick. And it's a permanent plus one to my defense, which was really nice. Defense is so important in Stardew Valley. The more defense you have, the less damage enemies do. I picked up a trash catalog here from one of the trash cans and this will give me access to a huge array of trash decorations we can place in our house and all around the farm. We have the plastic lawn chair, broken television, buried tire, all different kinds of cans and bottles, messy shorts, six pack rings, spilled beverages. It was just really cool, you know. We also had really dirty wallpaper recipes as well. 
I couldn't help myself and I turned my house into an absolute wreck. This is what a house would look like if Shane and Pam lived together. <laughs> the main thing was that my dog was still happy, goodbye Chuck, and my cactus was still smiling. So I took those as positives. The next day I swapped the tellies around because I needed a working telly. The broken telly didn't actually work, you know, which speaks for itself. So Gunther sent me on the bone mill the next day. That's handy. We can put bone fragments and other stuff into that to get back uh, speed grows and fertilizers and stuff like that. I also harvested my blackberry jelly so I can give that now into the raccoon along with the dried coconuts. And that was another raccoon quest completed. Thanks, Bobo. Take this. I got a raccoon journal. This is a book of power, and it just means that when we destroy weeds, we have a greater chance of getting mixed seeds from those weeds. So it's a really nice perk there to have that permanently. What a nice book of power to get. What more prizes would we get from this lovely raccoon? We can also purchase more of that book of power if we want for 999 fiber. Now obviously we can't reactivate it or increase our chances. It's just for trading with the book merchant when he visits. So it was time now to upgrade our house, make it a little bit bigger for 10,000 gold and some wood. I also purchased some staircases here as well using jades. And I also managed to pull up a sea cucumber as well because I needed that for the fishing collection. I also got the midnight carp too. I came across the weirdest quest the next day. Emily wanted me to say hi to every single person in town. Just so everybody would like me a little more. I mean, I've never seen this quest before. It must be a new addition to 1.6. But it was time for another community quest. We had Pierre's Prime Produce Rock Rejuvenation. Because I was already growing the pumpkins, it made sense to just take Pierre's Prime Produce because I was going to get a lot of ghost star vegetables and you do get some nice money for doing those quests as well. I also put up some more catfish today because it was raining. But what I was really looking for was the tiger trout, just for the fishing collection. We didn't stop there though. It was then after the lake area. I needed to pull up the walleye here for the fishing collection and I managed to get that without too much hassle at all. The next day, things got a little bit exciting. It was a help wanted quest from Willie. He wanted four salmon, but there was a prized ticket in the mix. So I was gonna do that straight away and put up those four salmon as quickly as possible. I really wanted to get my hands on that book with the love heart to see what it was all about. Willie was super happy with the salmon. I got 300 gold for doing it, but I didn't care too much about that. I just wanted to take it. So I was back to Ginger Island and I was pulling up taro roots here. I was getting some golden walnuts in the process, which was nice. I was actually getting very close now to entering Key's secret walnut room, but I still needed a few more golden walnuts. So I traded in some bone fragments for some more taro tubers. I'm going to plant all those down. I also planted a lot of mixed seeds as well. Went back to the dwarf on the fifth floor there and I finally purchased the diamond hunter skill book. So I now have a chance to get diamonds every time I mine open a node. I used my watering can to get up to that protection ring, then I realised I didn't need to use the watering can, I could have just walked around the lava. <laughs> Finally got access to Key's secret walnut room. Let the key quests commence. We had Key's crop and four precious stones. There was not a hope I was doing the Key's crop quest. Way too time consuming, way too boring. I selected the four precious stones that can just go into the skull cavern and get those no problem. I had a look to see if the 1.6 introduced any new items to this um, key machine, and it did. We had fireworks, we also had blue grass starter, that's the really nice grass, you know, that gives animals friendship bonuses. But we needed moss and mystic syrup to craft it, and I had no idea how to get mystic syrup at this moment in time. I also got Woody's secret from cutting down a tree. Fell trees have a 5% chance now to give double the wood. That's pretty nice, and that was a new book of power added to our lovely repertoire. I made more staircases today, we're gearing up for another Skull Cavern run to see if we can get those prismatic shards. I also made some triple shot espressos with all the coffees I had accumulated as well. So I checked the fortune teller today, and I actually had the best luck possible, which was really nice. So I activated my warp totem straight away, and we're going to go into the Skull Cavern now for a really good run of it. I spammed staircases more or less until I ran out of them and eventually I got to a treasure floor here where I got a dark cowboy hat so I'm going to equip that straight away just for a change of style. There's loads of different cowboy hats you can get in the game but you cannot get the pink one or the prismatic one from the, um, the treasure chest. You get those from alternative means. I got to floor 100 I got a special chest but the reward wasn't so special. It was just another dark cowboy hat unfortunately. 
the chest was cool though. I got my first prismatic shard on floor 101. What's interesting is that when you get to floor 200, you'll get awarded with two chests, and floor 300, you'll get rewarded with three treasure chests. So it's definitely worth making staircases and getting down as deep as possible to maximize on the rewards. I got loads of prismatic shards today, but more importantly, I got absolute tons of iridium ores, and all those ores can be turned into bars. They will sell for 1500 gold a pop, which is just amazing. All of the lovely powder melons now have fully matured. So we're going to harvest those all up. We're going to sell them now to make a pretty good profit. I made more furnaces today because I wanted to output a lot more bars to make bigger profits. I sold all of the powder melons and the broccoli. I even sold star fruit and everything else to our good friend Pierre to get some flash money. I purchased some cave jelly by training a book there to the bookseller. That jelly will come in handy later on when it comes to making more of those smoke machines. I purchased the horse skill book. I also purchased the cinder like skill book as well because I wanted to run faster through crops and grass and things like that. I had a look at the Queen of Sauce cookbook, but I couldn't afford it right now. I will grab it later on. So I used up a lot of money on the books of power and also the skill books as well to get some more really cool passive abilities. I now had a fairly good repertoire of books of power. I also made three more fish smokers. So bring on the fish. That means I can smoke a lot more fish that faster, meaning a more or less double fishing profits for me. I'm going to get Robin to make a deluxe barn, and I'm going to go back to Ginger Island, put in the four prismatic shards, that's 40 key gems in the bag. I'm going to purchase the key to the town. Not only will I be able to enter anywhere I want regardless of the time, but the vendors will also be accessible at earlier and later times as well. Clint will upgrade our axe to the final form, the Iridium Axe, and we're going to go back into our greenhouse now, collect all this lovely starfruit wine, and we're turning more Iridium ores into Iridium bars for even more money. Because I had so much Iridium got, the money was just flowing. I managed to put a tapper onto that new rare tree there. It was some sort of a fiddlehead fern tree. Let's find out what that tapper will produce. I couldn't use a tapper on any of the other trees. They'll be on moss trees. It was time to purchase more animals. I'm going to get a duck right now. Let the naming conventions begin. This one, we're going to call it Natasha. For next, we have Ashley. That's going to be um, a duck as well. Another duck. It's going to be Taylor, another member of our channel. It was Abigail's birthday today. I'm going to give her a pufferfish. Lots of friendship points there. I then decided to purchase the mannequin male and female off Sandy. I wanted to see how they worked. I wanted to put lots of clothes on them to see what it looked like. I also purchased 184 starfruit off Sandy as well. So we're going to put the majority of these in the greenhouse. Any ones left over will go over to Ginger Island. And this is what the mannequins look like. I think it's a really cool aesthetic. There's lots you can do with those mannequins in terms of um, style-wise, you know, to make your farm look a bit more unique. I finally got the warp obelisk unlocked over in Ginger Island. They also gave me a Ginger Island warp totem for free as well. That was a nice added feature. It was time to finish off Pierre's prime produce quest. 2,500 gold in the bag. And it was time to replant our second batch of pumpkins. I then collected a dinosaur mayonnaise for the first time. And I got my Iridium Axe back off Clint. That was another tool fully upgraded. Now we're going to work on our pan. We're going to upgrade the copper pan to a steel pan. I wanted to see how potent these new pan upgrades can be. All the way to the Iridium pan to see how good it gets. I'm going to get my prize ticket now for doing Pierre's questline. And I'm also going to make two Iridium bands because I had a lot of solar essences and void essences collected from killing the monsters over the past few seasons. I'm also purchasing two ruby rings and I'm going to combine my Iridium bands with my ruby rings for a huge attack power buff. The next day, I had a look at the tapper and it generated a fiddlehead fern, <laughs> which figures the fiddlehead fern tree would, of course, generate fiddlehead ferns. It is nice, though, to get an actual flowing stock of fiddlehead ferns through tappers. So it's a nice it's a nice adjustment. It was time to purchase more animals. We're going to go with Vice City, Pink Blossom, another cool Gamergar member, Marastic. I was going to purchase a pig, but Marnie just got up and left the store <laughs> without saying a word. That's what I hate about Marnie. Sometimes it can be just infuriatingly hard to purchase stuff off her because she's never around. 
I went to Robin. I'm going to upgrade my big coop to a deluxe coop. And it was time to choose another community quest. We had Island Ingredients. And we had Robin's Project. I'm going to go with Robin's Project because it's quite easy to get hardwood now. And I just didn't have an optimal setup now to ship a hundred pineapples within 14 days. So it made sense to get Robin's Project and just farm some hardwood. I'm also going to go with Key's Prismatic Grange here too because I wasn't going to go with Key's Crop. And it would be easy enough to do that quest, especially now that we can purchase Georgia Colas for the blue item. Got another Soul Sapper Ring today. And out of the Elite Chest, another useless Soul Sapper Ring. I was just getting horrendous luck with the chests. I combined my Iridium Band with the Ruby Ring twofold. That is a 40% attack bonus now. So we're going to do way more damage now to enemies. What's better, I got level 10 combat that night ago with Brute. That's 15% additional damage on top of that. That's a 55% damage increase. It was then onto the Stardew Valley Fair. I had a quite the nice selection of items there. Definitely gonna get first place for that. As a reward, I get the usual 1000 star tokens. With that, I just keep gambling on green until I get enough star tokens to purchase all of the rewards. There was, however, an additional reward to be had. It was a prize token. I absolutely purchased that. After the prize token, I went ahead and got the star drop. I also got the rear crow because that's needed for the deluxe scarecrow at the end. I went back to Clint the next day, I got back my steel pan, I handed it straight back in again, I got him to upgrade it to a gold pan. It's going to be very interesting to see what the Iridium pan can do. In terms of the Keys Prismatic Grange quest, for the blue items I just went with 100 Georgia Colas. I had Cherry Bombs, Bug Meat, Fiber, Copper Ores and Sap for the other stuff, so it was easy enough to complete with those items. With the currency I had, I purchased Pierre's missing stock list in the hopes I could access his year 2 crops. I was wrong though. He still just gives you the year 1 crops, but he does allow you to purchase any crop regardless of season, but it has to be a year 1 crop. I gave Pierre his stock list. Happy days was off to Robin to give her the 80 hardwood needed to complete her project quest. That was 2,000 gold in the bag there from Robin. The next day, I was collecting pumpkin juice and harvesting more pumpkins. I gave Marnie a pearl here because it was her birthday. Got her shut up with three hearts. Collected Mayor Lewis's lucky purple shorts. Had a chat with Marnie. She was like, um, what? Hey, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Give them to Mayor Lewis. You found them where? Oh, I have no idea how they could have gotten there. You're such a poor liar, Mayor Lewis. Why can't you just be honest? Let everyone know about your love. You shouldn't hide love, Lewis. I did collect another prize ticket and I managed to finally get that book of power. Friendship. 101. This passive will basically give us extra friendship points whenever we do any sort of activity that generates friendship points, such as giving gifts, completing quests. It's real handy in the long run. I put the mushroom logs down near wild trees so they would generate mushrooms every couple of days and it's a really nice item to have. I also picked up Linus's berry basket just to get some more friendship points with him. I also put a battery pack into the lockbox here to start Key's quest to get into the casino. You don't actually need the secret note to start that quest, you can start it whenever you wish. Give Linus back his berry basket along with a hazelnut for some extra friendship points with him. Back on Ginger Island, I got a few more golden walnuts from harvesting up some crops here, which was nice. And I managed to get some other golden walnuts from opening up the mussels here as well. You can get a total of five from mining open the mussels. I also got Robin to build the stables. I wanted to see if any changes were implemented with the 1.6 in terms of how the horse looked. I purchased two heaters off Marnie as well, just to make sure the animals are kept nice and warm for winter. I also purchased a pig, we're going to call the pig DJ Guardian. I also purchased a rabbit here, we're going to call it Manya. Our lovely raccoon friend was looking for some dried common mushrooms and five cave carrots. We would of course oblige being the super nice neighbour that we are. For the five common mushrooms it was simple enough, I just got them from the mushroom cave. I also built an ostrich incubator. I'm going to put this inside the barn now because it's now a deluxe barn. And I'm going to put the ostrich egg straight in there just so we have the ostrich as well on the farm. And that will cover more or less all of the farm animals as you have in Stardew Valley. The next day I got the dried common mushrooms along with loads of iridium bars. I already had the cave carrots. So it was time to sort out our lovely hungry raccoon friend. Let's see what rewards we're going to get this time for completing another raccoon bundle. Thanks, Bobo. Take this. <laughs> and I got a raccoon hat. Real nice indeed. I, of course, put the raccoon hat on me straight away because I think it's the coolest thing ever. These raccoons are just so nice. And what's more, we can purchase more raccoon hats from the wife because every time we complete a raccoon community quest, the wife gets an expanded shop. 
it was just 10 mixed seeds to get more raccoon hats, if we ever want them in the future. Now the raccoon says we can grow the family bigger. Well, I wish you the best of luck in that endeavour, my friend. It was back to Clint to get the gold pan, but we're not going to stop there. We're going to give that straight back into Clint to get the Iridium pan. That'll be ready in a couple of days. I also went back to the witch's swamp and I pulled up the void salmon. I needed that for the fishing collection. I also went to the pirate's cove and I managed to play the darts game. Every time we complete the darts game, we get a golden walnut up to a maximum of three. If we want to achieve perfection in Stardew Valley, we will have to acquire all of the golden walnuts. Once the dart game was finished with, we were more or less finished with the Pirate's Cove. It was time to leave, go back to the farm and name our horse Katie. We're going to now stroll around the valley with our good friend Katie. We're now going to go back to Robin, give her a midnight carp. She posted that on the bulletin board. And the reason why we took that quest was because we wanted to build up friendship points with Robin. I also gave her uh, spaghetti as well because it was her birthday. And she finally gave me the recipe for the flute block. I also going to get Robin to build a shed so I can fill it up with kegs. And I'm also going to put a rainbow shell inside of the uh, box here for Mr. Key. The next quest was to place 10 beets inside Mayor Lewis's fridge. And I've got those beets grown over on Ginger Island. I picked up the prismatic jelly community quest. And I managed to get my iridium pan back off Clint as well. We can now use that iridium pan to see if we can get some real nice stuff. Next up, we're going to upgrade the watering can to its maximum potential. We can also put the iridium pan on our head and use it as a hat. It's just so funny because it's purple. We finally completed the flute block puzzle because it was raining over on Ginger Island. We could do that and the mermaid would give us 10 more golden walnuts. I managed to pan up a fossilized tail with 11 iridium ore, but it gets way better. It's time to pan with Gamer Garrett, everybody. Let me show you how it's done. After a while, I finally came across a fishing spot that gave me not just a lucky ring, but a ton of other stuff too. You just cannot beat the Iridium Pan. It's absolutely amazing. Every time you pan up something with the Iridium Pan, there's a very good chance that another panning spot will appear straight away. So you can get a really good chain going with the pan. I would, of course, equip the Lucky Ring. Plus one luck is a really good perk to be walking around with. Luck determines so many things in Stardew Valley. It was time for another key quest here. We're going to go with Skull Cavern Invasion. We just have to make our way down to 400, and that'll get 40 key gems as well, which would be really nice. So we're just going to spam staircases till we get as close to floor 100 as we can, and then we just utilize our bombs to make the rest of the way there. Upon spamming down staircases, I did come across a treasure floor with two Iridium Sprinklers. That was actually very nice, because I am in the realms now of upgrading my sprinklers to Iridium Sprinklers, so I can put more crops on the ground. If I come across radioactive ores, I will prioritize those. And when I got to floor 100, then I got the really cool treasure chest again. Inside, I got five survival burgers. Plus three foraging is actually pretty nice. It's a nice burger to have. I was also getting lots of prismatic shards for my journeys down here too, which was good. I also got swarmed by tons of iridium bats. I somehow managed to fend them all off. I did get 22 iridium ores from it though. I got another prismatic shard from a treasure room, which was nice as well. The next day, it was time to smelt all of these lovely radioactive ores into radioactive bars. The greenhouse was also ready, and I got another fern tree here. I'm going to put a tapper on it. It's cool that the two trees turn different ways. You could almost, just almost, turn into some sort of a cool-looking gate to your farm. I got the copper watering can off Clint. I'm going to give that strip back into him to upgrade it to steel watering can. I was going to cut down loads of trees here. When I was cutting down trees in Cindersap Forest, I noticed a door. I got very excited by this because I've never noticed this before. And this absolutely wasn't in 1.5. This was new. It says only a master of the five ways may enter. Four out of five. I knew straight away it was talking about my core skills. My farming, mining, foraging, fishing and combat. My foraging was skill level nine. So I had to get that one more level before I could enter that room. I did not know at the time what was inside there. But I was absolutely determined to get into that room as quickly as possible. So I was basically going to prioritize foraging now for the next few days. Just cutting down any sort of tree or stump I came across. If I saw any sort of forage around the ground, I would of course pick it up straight away because it all counts towards foraging XP. The radioactive bars yield 4,500 gold a pop. That's absolutely insane. I also got really lucky here in the mines. And get down to 47 for the first time I got the prismatic slime. Killed that. Got the prismatic jelly. So we can give that back to the wizard now for some really good money. 
But the main reason we do this quest is to get the recipe the wizard will send us the next day, the monster musk. That makes monster eradication goals much easier to achieve because it will dramatically increase the rate of which monsters spawn in the mines. So I'm getting loads of mushrooms here from the mushroom logs. Each mushroom log can give like up to four mushrooms. It's really good. I got purple mushrooms, common mushrooms, red mushrooms. I do plan on putting a lot more mushroom logs out on the farm. Because it was Thursday, I swapped in three prismatic shards for the magic rock candy. That will come in real handy later on. And I spent a great deal of time then cut down more trees today to try to increase my foraging skill. I went over to Ginger Island and all the beets were ready to be harvested. I'm going to pick them all up. And I cut down even more trees on Ginger Island to increase my foraging skill. I also unlocked the fast travel around Ginger Island by just unlocking the parrot lift. That was more or less all of the Ginger Island upgrades done. The next day, the wizard set me on the recipe for monster musk. And this means dungeon crawl now becomes much more interesting. I got another fiddlehead fern today off this tapped tree. So I suppose it's just fiddlehead ferns and moss for the moment. I haven't come across any new trees yet. I'm going to get my prize ticket as well for completing the last community center quest for the wizard. And I'm also going to put some beets inside Merluce's fridge. Now I get another task from Mr. Key to give the sand dragon his last meal. It's time to trade in our prize ticket and this time we're going to get back a dehydrator. So it's going to be nice having two of those instead of one because it takes so long to actually dry out fruit in this game. So I put a solar essence into the dragon skeleton and I had to move my chest here to get the club card and I actually moved my chest down in between my furnaces I thought it was so funny. There's actually I actually have some job putting that chest back up into its original place. We're going to go back to Clint again and we're going to get him to upgrade the watering can yet again to a gold watering can. And I spent the rest of the day pulling up some gobies here because I wanted to put these into a new fishing pond to see what kind of items they would generate. It was also time to pull up all of the pumpkins. Our banana tree was finally ready. We got our first mango and our first banana. We can bring the banana back to Ginger Island. Robin will make another fishing pond for us and I'm also going to purchase the jack-o'-lantern recipe and another rare crow from the Halloween event here as well. We're also going to do the maze and get a golden pumpkin which will become very handy for the next upcoming birthday for extra friendship points. I found a little secret here behind the Georgia Mart. It's a prize ticket, but I needed a copper axe to clear away the tree stump there to get it. And I also found another box just in the room here at the back of the Adventures Guild with the Mapping Cave Systems Book of Power. And all that Book of Power does is it reduces the cost needed to pay Marilyn to go back in and collect your goods if you ever pass out in the Skull Caverns or regular mines gets you a 50% discount for Marilyn's services. So the gorilla is after eating the banana here now and he will reward me with three golden walnuts for that deed. Nice one. There's also a lot more starfruit we can harvest here over in Ginger Island. All this will be converted into starfruit wine for lots and lots of money. We're getting the gold watering can back off Clint and we're going to give that back into him now for the final upgrade. He'll always notice at 6 o'clock when I'm handing that back in. That's because I have the key to the town. So I can just go in there anytime I want and primarily get upgrades. So to get the next book of power, you need at least a steel axe to clear away that big log. And you also need a steel pickaxe to clear away the big piece of rock. And then there's a gold trash can here that you can open up. And inside, we get a new book of power called the Alleyway of Buffett. And this book of power increases the odds of finding items out of trash cans, which is really cool. So it might make for a decent trash can run later on. I wonder with that book of power, how much loot you can get from trash cans in one whole year of the game. So we're now in winter and it's time to click on this bush and get the magnifying glass off Krobus. That will allow us to pick up secret letters all over Stardew Valley and some will lead to very powerful rewards indeed. We're also going to pick up a new community quest. We're going to get Juicy Bugs Wanted from Willy here. He just wants a hundred pieces. That won't be a problem at all. It's also Krobus's birthday today. And I've been saving this gold star horse radish for him for quite some time that's going to put him up to three stars. I'm also going to purchase the dehydrator recipe off Pierre so I can make more of those if I want. It was nice seeing all of the NPCs in their new winter clothing. Gus looked really comfy. Pierre, honestly, he looked the part as well with his new green sweater. I also spoke to Marnie. She looked really good. You can tell by looking at the outfits how much love Concerned Abe has for this game. All of the outfits looked amazing. I put the gobies into the fishing pond here in the hopes they'll generate some really cool stuff for me. 
I was getting quite unlucky with the key quest. It was another choice between keys crap, which I'm not going to pick, and another Skull Cavern invasion. I was getting kind of bored of doing the Skull Caverns over and over again, but it was the best way to get the key gems. I needed more key gems to get more of the good stuff. So I'm going to purchase more powder melon seeds today. I got 46 in total there off the raccoon's wife. And they will be planted on our regular farm. So it's going to be nice to grow stuff in winter. I had a quick chat with our raccoon friend and he said, Thirsty, need juice. So what he was looking for here was a cave carrot juice and a pickled winter root. And that would be very simple to get because you can get both items very commonly around Star Giovanni. Because it's winter, the winter root will be even easier to get. So I'm going to put all of the powder medals down and a new ostrich finally hatched let's give her the name or we're going to call it doodle <laughs> doodle isn't a member of our channel but she's a great friend of mine and a very good youtube content creator it's now time to look at all of the farming animals we've collected so far and we have one of each it was then time to pull up some winter fish we just got the squid there which is really nice now i'm going to turn that squid into bait and that bait will come super handy for the big event this season we also get back an iridium watering can and we're now going to get Clint to start upgrading the hose. I'm also cutting down more trees in the hopes to get my foraging skill to 10 because I still haven't got to 10. And now that all the trees are gone, all that's left for us to do is to slay some enemies, get some bug meat and complete some more quests. It was then off to try to fish up the hardest fish in the game in my opinion, the glacier fish. It took me 3 attempts. To actually pull this thing from up out of the waters it was just so hard it's such a ferociously hard fish way way harder than the legend in my opinion and it's only worth 2200 gold which is unfortunate i think all the legendary fish should be worth way more than that you know minimum five six k gold at least i finally got my forging to level 10 and a new gauge appeared called mastery one out of ten thousand just so you know mastery is a combination of all of our skills Linus looked really good with his new winter getup, and be I decided to give him a birthday present as well as give him a cactus there. Good for you, Linus, my friend. I also fished up a link cod. We need that for the fishing collection as well, and a few other bits and bobs too. So all what was left now for the fishing collection was the three fish you get from doing the submarine mini game in winter. So we'll get to that soon, and that will be another star drop then from Willy. So level ten forager, we're going to get the lumberjack. All trees have a chance to drop hardwood. When I woke up the next way, I got a pop-up saying, I sense a way has opened up somewhere. <laughs> I knew it had to be the door. I got my copper hoe off Clint and I went towards the door to open it up. Inside was a room with five statues, each having some sort of profession on it. Basically, for every mastery level we get, we can unlock one of those professions and get really good perks from them and very potent tools. So I had to make a decision on what mastery I was going to get first. We will eventually end up with all of the masteries, eventually. But for now, I had to choose. Grandpa left a really cool note there as well to say that if I got this far, I was ready. To complete the mastery gauge, we just have to use all of our regular professions. They all count towards the mastery gauge. Combat mastery, the anvil, allows us to reforge trinkets, randomizing their stats, cost three iridium bars each. The mini forge, we can now use a dwarvish forge from the convenience of our home. That was so cool, and the ability to use trinkets. The mystic tree seed sounded awesome, you know, the treasure totem sounded good too. And we can also find golden mystery boxes if we went with the foraging mastery instead of regular mystery boxes. The next stop then for the farmer, we had the iridium site, it can now gather crops, statue of blessings, and now we had golden animal crackers, which permanently double the farm animal's produce. For fishing mastery, we had an advanced iridium rod, we can have up to two bobbers on that rod, we had challenge bait, a perfect eels triple the catch, however, every time a fish escapes we lose one. And then we can encounter golden fishing chests, what would we get inside those? And then for the mining we have statue of the dwarf king, which is mining related perks. A heavy furnace, more efficient regular furnace, 25 pieces of ore and 3 coal per use. And gem bearing rocks now grant twice the gems. They all sounded totally awesome and it took me ages to kind of decide and which one I was going to select for this challenge. Eventually I just went with the combat mastery, uh, which sounded the most useful because I was really interested in finding out how those trinkets work. So it was back to Clint to break open some more geodes, then it was on to Gunther, and I was trying to finish off all of the artifacts here and the minerals. I then decided to get Clint to upgrade my hoe again. We're going to go for the steel hoe all the way up to the iridium, of course. It was then back down killing bugs. 
The reason why we're killing bugs is because I still needed a hundred bug meat in total to complete Willy's community quest. So once I had that done, it was time to get some really good rewards off Willy, along with 3000 gold, wasn't too bad at all. It was time to go back to the lovely book merchant, this time at almost 500,000 gold to pay around with. I purchased the Queen of Sauce cookbook for 50,000. This thing is absolutely amazing. It's not a book of power. Instead, once we activate it, we will learn all of the Queen of Sauce recipes. Now, bear in mind, that is just the Queen of Sauce recipes. We do not learn the recipes that we get from the NPCs, from the villagers of Stardew Valley. We still have to butter them up to learn all their secrets. But it's nice to get all the Queen of Sauce ones out of the way so we don't have to watch the telly every Sunday or every Wednesday. I'm also going to get some skill books here just to see how effective they are. I have 599 XP at the moment. I, I activated a mining skill book and it went up to 849. Not really worth it in my opinion. I suppose the best way to fill this mastery gauge is to blow up iridium ores or radioactive ores or just farm tons and tons of crops. The mushroom logs were giving me some great stuff here. Purple mushrooms, red mushrooms and of course I could dry all those out. I'm working on Penny now because I want her to marry me. So I'm giving her um, sandfish because she loves sandfish. I'm also working on Vincent and Jazz because I want to learn the spring onion mastery. Just so I can add it to my uh, cool UI. It'd be nice to see it all filled up looking pretty. So it was time to hand over the resources the raccoon needed to progress his questline. Thanks Bobo, take this. I got five fairy dust. That's absolutely amazing. And that's going to come in so handy to speed up production and items in the future. You're a good friend, Bobo. Now we can have more kids. <laughs> I got dried purple mushrooms today. 2,660 gold. And that is actually a huge profit. Even if you were to sell five iridium mushrooms, you would still get more from the dried mushrooms. Just so you know. The dehydrator is a game changer. It was time to get the steel hoe back off Clint. We're going to hand that straight back in for the gold hoe. Because we have so much iridium ores, we can make iridium bars. It's easy now to get money. We also have batches of starfruit wine being made as well, so eventually we're going to end up with millions of gold. I decided to clear out the entirety of the quarry, and I also came across the bear as well. Gave him some maple syrup, and he gave me the bear's special knowledge. Salmon berries and blackberries are now worth three times the gold, which is nice. I also got access to the casino, because I had my casino club card. I played this minigame over and over again, uh, until I had enough casino coins to purchase the alien rare crow and i won a few times which was nice and i had to purchase a few coins as well but all i wanted was a rare crow and i was out of there i could also purchase a statue of endless fortune for a million gold i might purchase a few of those when i do a continuation run in a week or two so i wanted to try out the tent i haven't actually used it yet i put it down there just outside of the vendor there and i woke up the next day in exactly the same spot that tent's going to be a game changer for future Skull Cavern runs. The only downside is that it'll be hard to see if it's going to be a good luck day or not. So I got an auto petrol on floor 65. It was just so lucky. And I got another one when I got down to floor 100. That's one for the coop and one for the barn. I mean, you can't really get luckier than that in all fairness. I then kept making my way down. I wanted to see if I could get floor 200 before the day expired. What you see here now is me fighting an army of mummies and I'm going to blow them all up at the same time. And it's just going to look so satisfying. That's how you do it, folks. <laughs> Got a prismatic shot as well from one of them, which was not too bad. Eventually, I reached a mastery threshold. It says you've reached a new level of understanding. I can now choose one of the advanced perks from the five. And I'm probably going to go with the, the combat, because I really wanted to see how those trinkets worked. It just seemed so interesting. And as we can see, it, it's now more XP to get the next Master Chest Show. It's going to be 15,000 instead of 10,000. So it goes up every time you get a level. When I got to floor 200, I got two chests instead of one. And it was very exciting. Unfortunately, I didn't get great things in either chest. Between a red slime egg and wild winter seeds. But the potential is there to get really good things in those two chests. And it just adds more incentive to go down and do the Skull Cavern in the future. So I got the last rare crow today. That is the Snowman Rare Crow. And with that, I'll be able to learn the Deluxe Rare Crow no problem. I also took part in the fishing event. I won it no problem at all. And the prize was the same. The 1.6 didn't change anything here. Not that I saw anyway. It was time to mow run into the next day. And that is the Deluxe Scarecrow recipe. The Deluxe Scarecrow covers twice the range of a regular Scarecrow or Rare Crow. So it is 
something that you do want to save up on tiles. It was now time to select a profession mastery. We're going to go with combat mastery because I wanted to see how the trinkets worked. And boy, I was not disappointed. To make the anvil to rework the trinkets, I just needed 50 iron bars, which wasn't too bad at all. To make the mini forge, so I wouldn't have to go to Ginger Island Volcano anymore, I needed Dragon's Tooth, Iron Gold and Iridium Bars. That wasn't too bar bad either, I just needed a few bits and bobs. I got the gold hoe back off Clint, and I was going to hand it back into him one more time, just to get the Iridium hoe, just so I can say that I've upgraded all of my core tools. It is nice to have Iridium versions of everything though. So, Morris here wants 500,000 gold for the cinema, I said why not, I had the money on me and I wasn't really using it for anything else right now, so I just got the cinema there while I had the funds. It was also time to do rock rejuvenation with Emily, and it was time to pick up another quest. We had bad luck again, Keys Crop and Skull Cavern Invasion, so it's going to be another Skull Cavern run. I picked up my first trinket here, a paratake. Summons a level 1 parrot companion who grants you a low chance to find gold coins when slaying monsters. Just so you know... This parrot trinket is totally overpowered. I can reforge that and try to get level 2, 3, 4 or level 5 parrot. The higher the level the parrot, the more often you'll get money from killing monsters. And most monsters will drop between 250 and 500 gold regardless of what kind of monsters they are. I mean it could be a bug in the starter caves, it could be a serpent in the skull cavern invasion cave. I also merged some rings together, the iridium band with the lucky ring. And I also merged in Iridium Bound with the Phoenix Ring, and I enchanted some tools. I wanted to get Master on my fishing rod for the increased fishing level, so it's really nice to get that, it just makes fishing a little bit easier. So I reworked my Parrot Egg to a level 3 Parrot Companion, and now I have a high chance to find gold coins when sent monsters. That can go up to level 5 I believe, and it just gives you an absurdly high chance to get gold when you're killing monsters, and it's extremely profitable. You can make on average over 100,000 gold per day using that parrot trinket and killing monsters. I also picked up the golden spur. Critical strikes give you a speed boost for 8 seconds. You can rework that trinket to modify how long the, the buff lasts for. I got an 8 second one there but I also picked up a 6 second one as well and a 7 second one. I brought Vincent to the um, cinema to get hearts up with him and I purchased him a star drop sorbet because he actually loves that. But he didn't like the movie, so it's going to kind of even itself out. I won't lose or gain friendship points with him. He just wasn't a fan of The Miracle at Costa Ranch. I thought it was a, a kick-ass watch. Vincent said he doesn't get it. What don't you get about a tree growing a fruit? Seriously. But hey, that's Vincent. He does love snails after all. <laughs> so I finally had all of my core tools upgraded. And because it was Thursday, I purchased another magic rock candy off of the uh, Desert Merchant. I then went to Emily, gave her the amethyst there that she needed, that was rock rejuvenation completed. It was our time for the squid fest and it worked more or less the same way as the trout derby. The more squid that you caught, the better prizes you were going to get. Now I caught as few squid before this and I turned them into squid bait, so I had an increased chance of catching squid no problem. Once you caught up to 8 squid, you would get the maximum amount of prizes, so when I got 8, there was no point in any more fishing, and when I clicked on him then, there was a load of prizes there to be had, including a new book of power. The book was called The Art of Crabbing. Crab pots have a 25% chance to yield double. That's absolutely amazing. I now had accumulated a lot of books of power, but there was still a good few books left to get. I did the exact same thing the next day. I just fished up squid till I had 8 of them. Then it was time to get more rewards. I got some good stuff. Shumbershot Expressos, a treasure chest, dish of the sea, mystery box and trap bobber. Not too bad. It was then time to harvest our lovely starfruit wine. I'm going to get so much money for this. It was then back to another Skull Cavern invasion. Picked up another auto petter, which was nice. I now had two auto grabbers and two auto petters. I picked up a new trinket called the Fairy Box. Summons a level 3 fairy companion that heals you in combat situations. So the fairy will only heal you when you're in combat. It will not heal you outside of combat. Just to make that clear, because I found out the hard way. That is a level 3 fairy, I believe the fairy goes up to level 5, and the higher the level the fairy, the more it heals you. So I made it down to floor 100, and I got the um, Iridium Snake Juice, and that gave me a permanent health increase of 25, which was nice. I managed to finally hand in all of the minerals to Gunther, got another Magic Rock Candy back as a reward, that was pretty good. 
and I got Clint to break open over 40 mystery boxes. I didn't get a whole lot of good stuff, but I did get a mystery hat, which was really cool. I thought it was the coolest hat ever. I put it on straight away. A raccoon friend was looking for some geodes and a diamond. I had those on hand. I gave him in straight away. Thanks, Bobo. Take this. <laughs> and I got a jungle tank. A really cool fishing tank that I could put fish into. I also had to look to see if his wife got the jungle tank, and she did, and I can get more by just putting in some broken glasses. The things these raccoons find as valuable is just crazy. So it was time for the night market. I gave Penny uh, some flowers so we could become girlfriend and boyfriend, and it was time to take the relationship to the next step. It was then time to pull up the spookfish, followed by the blobfish, followed by the last fish that we needed, the midnight squid, for the master angler achievement. That was all of the fish now caught. And that was going to be a nice star drop off Willy the next day. There was just a small handful of star drops now left to get. We're almost there with the star drop challenge. We still needed one from Gunther and we also needed one via marriage from whoever our spouse is going to be. So we're going to go with Cave Patrol now with Clint and we're going to kill some dust sprites. We need dust sprites for the monster eradication goal anyway. And I also wanted to use my new parrot trinket to get lots of money. So there was loads of reasons we could go back in and start killing dust sprites. It was now time to take another key quest. We had Keith's Kindness and Extended Family. Now, I chose Extended Family because I want to experiment using the new 1.6 updates. I want to see if I can exploit this quest, abuse it, and make hundreds of thousands of gold. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now <laughs> using some of the new artisan equipment that we got. For example, the Fish Smoker. I also had enough um, key gems to get three Galaxy Souls. And I'm actually going to build myself a mini forge and use that over in Stardew Valley to upgrade my weapon to an infinity weapon instead of going into the volcano and using the big dwarvish forge inside there. The mini forge works the exact same way as the dwarvish forge. You could just use it wherever you want, which is really handy. After three galaxy souls, a galaxy weapon turns into an infinity weapon. It becomes way stronger. Now, while the extended fishing quest is active, Unless we capture all of the legendary fish, we can pull up as much of the same legendary fish as we wish. The legend too goes for the exact same price as the legend. I pulled up about five of these. I'm going to smoke them all and I'm going to make an absolute ton of money. Fishing has just become totally overpowered in Stardew Valley. It has become the new end game money maker in my opinion. I mean this thing sells for 31,000 gold a pop. I'm going to get 157,000 gold. And that was just a modest day's fishing. I can prep for that way better. I dare say I could probably get 10 of those a day to make some serious cash. When I was finished experimenting, I decided to finish off the quest. So I got the rest of the legendary fish. For some reason, I couldn't fish up the son of the crimson fish. And I think it was because there was an event going on. So maybe I had to wait. Look at the amount of money I made here from fishing. I made over 150,000. It was just insane. The next day, I pulled up the son of the crimson fish. And it was back down into the mines. And we were killing dust sprites. To be honest, we were killing anything that moved because everything had a chance to drop at least 250 gold on the feet. Getting these ambush rooms was just amazing. I was just getting so much money from killing monsters. It was just absolutely insane. I didn't need to farm anymore. I was just getting so much money from killing stuff. I finally reached a new level of understanding. That is another mastery level. It's 20,000 XP now to get the third one. I also finished off the cave patrol quest, that was 6,000 gold in the bag, and Clint will more than likely send me on the Geo Crusher the next day. I had to choose another mastery, which one I was going to pick, I was going to go with the foraging. I really wanted to find out how that mystic tree seed worked, and how the treasure totem worked, and I think that the golden mystery boxes too would be a game changer, because the mystery boxes are just so common, and to get upgraded golden ones sounded like a good way to go. To make the treasure totem, I needed hardwood, mystic syrup, and moss, and basically says use a diggable terrain to summon a ring of treasure spots. That sounded very interesting. To make the mystic tree seed, I just needed five of each tree seed, acorn, maple seed, pinecone, and mahogany seed. So I made three of these mystic tree seeds. I'm going to plant them down on the farm, and I'm also going to put down some fertilizer so they grow up really quickly. It was going to be very interesting to see, first of all, what the trees look like, and second of all, when we put tappers on them, if we can put tappers on them, what kind of stuff we're going to get. Clint sent me the recipe for the Geode Crusher the next day. I then had him break and open artifact troves because I really wanted to finish out the museum before the first year was over. 
I was down in the mines trying to get some artifacts to finish up the museum quest. I picked up a new trinket here, a blue-green frog egg. Someone's a hungry frog companion. Now, I just want to say this frog is absolutely insane. He can one-shot any enemy in the game. The only downfall is that when he eats an enemy, it does take him a good 20 seconds or so to deflate himself before he'll eat some other enemy. Now, when I say he'll eat any enemy, I mean that he will eat anything. He'll eat bugs, serpents, the big, huge, large serpents. He'll eat mummies. He'll eat mummies when they're regenerating. He'll gobble them all up, no problem. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Speaking of gobble, we finally got some garlic seeds from doing the Skull Cavern runs. That means we're going to get five more lovely golden walnuts from our fabulous froggy friend. But we're not just finished there. We only had a few golden walnuts left to get. So we might get to Georgia Parrot to find the rest, just to see what it looks like. I purchased the Book of Stars. It gives us XP towards all core professions. To be honest, I purchased every single skill book here because I had the money to do so. And it would be nice to get more mastery levels. After accessing all these skill books, I had a quick look at my mastery gauge. And to be honest, it didn't fill that fast. You know, it got a little bit of a meter, but we are just better off planting down crops. So because there was only a few golden wallets left to find, I only had to pay 70,000 gold for this Georgia parrot to fly around and get the rest of the walnuts for me. Now it does give a warning here and it says that it recommends you don't do this if you want to experience the full joint experience. I've experienced it loads of times, so I went ahead and done it. I also got a special charm here by handing in a rabbit's foot, um, which is a permanent luck increase. And I'm also going to get Robin to upgrade our house again to the next tier as well. Here is a fabulous cutscene of Morris, relaxed on Ginger Island with a big bag of gold and all of the golden parrots picking up the walnuts. Oh, it's just hilarious. That is all of the golden walnuts found for this challenge. Nice one, Morris. So I'm getting golden mystery boxes now, which is pretty cool. It'll be exciting to see Clint break those open. We'll see what kind of goodies we get inside. I picked up a new trinket today. I got the magic quiver. And this is quite an interesting trinket. Shoots a magic arrow at nearby enemies every 1.9 seconds, dealing 14 to 19 damage. So it just passively fires out arrows um, every few seconds, which is really cool. I put it on straight away to see how it done against regular enemies, and it just wasn't doing it for me. I mean, I know it does handy damage, but with the weapons I have now, that bat would have been dead in one hit. So I feel like it's not a great trinket, because by the time you get it, you're taking on enemies with hundreds of HP. It's just not doing the damage that I think it should be doing, you know? So I'm getting Clint to break open more boxes here now. Lovely golden mystical boxes. I got a mystical shirt. That's going to go so nice with my mystical hat. So I'm going to put that on straight away. Other than that, I just got more mixed seeds and other bits and bobs. So this time we're going to go with Robin's resource rush. We're going to collect a thousand pieces of wood in a week. That'll be easy enough to do. There's tons of trees here on Ginger Island that we can cut down. And we also get a lot more friendship points with Robin for that too. We finally got Danger in the Deep. We can now do the hardened versions of the regular cave. So it's going to be interesting now to see how quickly we can get down through that. Raccoon says, help us and I'll give you something nice. No problem at all. The raccoon wanted dried purple mushrooms and five cave carrots. I actually had the purple mushrooms and I had the cave carrots. So I was able to do that quest fairly quickly. I also used the fairy dust to speed up the dehydrator because I didn't want to wait a day for the purple mushrooms to process. I went down with my lovely horse Katie and I managed to give him the items on the same day that he asked for them. He says, thanks Bobo, take this. <laughs> it never gets old. He gave me a milk. It was so disappointing. Why would you give me a milk of all things? I'm after giving him purple mushrooms and cave carrots. I had a look at the extended stock though. And it's interesting to see that I can trade Mystic Syrup for Fairy Dust. I'm pretty sure those trees I'm growing would generate Mystic Syrup. So we're down now in the hardened versions of the mines. And I just want to get down to floor 120 as quickly as possible. Just so I can toggle the difficulty on these mines on and off at my leisure. Also to pick up those lovely key gems. If I see radioactive ores, I'll pick them up straight away. Because I still need lots of radioactive ores and radioactive bars to make some of the endgame items Stardew Valley has to offer. Slaying all these enemies is just super profitable. Having the bug killer comes in very handy for all bug type enemies. 
There's a few bug type enemies down here too in the middle there, so just come in handy fighting those, especially the spiders that jump around the place. The last item I needed was the bone flute, I gave that in and that was the whole collection complete. As a reward, Gunther is going to give me another star drop. All I needed now was just one more star drop from the marriage and that would be all the star drops gotten. So we're back down in the hardened versions of the mines on floor 82 now, I got some hyper speed growth there, that was nice. This is just an example of how hectic things can get down in the bottom floors. Enemies can spawn all over the place. And if you come down here with a monster musk, there's even more enemies. Could you imagine coming down here with a level 5 parrot and a monster musk? Think of the amount of money you would make. It was time for the winter start event and I had Clint. I gave him a gold bar which is a loved gift. He was super happy with that. As for my secret Santa, I got Demetrius. And Demetrius, unfortunately, gave me a pumpkin pie. I mean, it was, it was such a letdown, you know. I was hoping for a tea set or something like that or, you know, some sort of a better item. So our first mystic tree has fully grown. And I put a tap around straight away. That's going to give us mystic syrup, which is really interesting. And we finally got our way down to the bottom of the mines. Got some key gems there as well. And that's a little console there where we can toggle the difficulty on and off. So if you want to farm radioactive ore, for example, we can do just that. I got Clint here to break open some more gold and mystery boxes and I managed to pick up a new book of power and this book of power basically allows us to sell artifacts at a higher price which is fairly cool. You fetch a better price when selling artifacts. It was then back to good old Ginger Island we're cutting down trees for Robin's resource rush to get a thousand pieces of wood in total. When I was finished with Ginger Island I went over to the desert and cut down some trees over there I picked up a forager's hat from cutting down a tree it looked pretty cool but it just didn't beat the mystery hat i think that mystery hat is one of the coolest hats in the game when i finished robin's resource rush got a few thousand gold and i then decided to take penny to the cinema and i got her cotton candy because that's one of her favorite foods and we then went to watch the miracle at co-star ranch yet again what a movie it just never gets boring i finally got penny up to maximum heart so now we can get married but we won't see it in this video folks let me know if you want to see a 200 day continuation. I'd be very happy to sit down and put hundreds of hours into it. Thanks again everyone for watching. I really appreciate it. I know it was a really long video, but I just got so excited because there was so much new content to show. And I really hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you made it this far. It really helps me out. I'd love to be a full time YouTuber again. I'd love to do this every day. We've played through one year already, a new NPC has graced the streets of Pelican Town. Kent is his name. We will have to get Kent up a few friendship levels in order to learn his secret recipes. We need to make all of the recipes in order to get perfection. We're back in spring. We are going to use our lovely Iridium tools. We're going to hoe up the ground. We're also going to weed away all of the regular grass because we want the special blue grass to grow. We want it to expand as much as possible so animals get us lovely perks. We're going to purchase a ton of crops off the air. We're going to get at least 5 to 10 of each crop. We're also going to visit our lovely raccoon friend. And I'm going to trade in tons of maple seeds here for carrot seeds because we can grow those in spring. We're also going to continue drying out our mushrooms because we get some good profits that way. And we're going to fill up a shed with lovely starfruit. Starfruit wine will be the main money maker when it comes to getting that lovely gold clock. We're going to get the big stone chest off the dwarf here. We need to make that in order to get perfection and it's time to pick up a community quest we have gus's famous omelet and we have the aquatic overpopulation we're going to go up the gus quest because we have eggs for days we're also going to pick up a key quest we have let's play a game and keys hungry challenge there wasn't a whole lot of gems going for the hungry challenge the resources would be heavy for that so we're going to go with let's play a game and we are going to attempt to get the first place in junimo kart <laughs> junimo kart is one of the hardest games there is Mark my words, people. It took me a lot of attempts to get the 50,000 to get first place. When you play Junimo Kart, especially if you play it on single player mode, time doesn't go forward, so you can play it as much as you want until you get that first place. We got there eventually. It was time to give the raccoon here some eggs and some dried mushrooms, and we get a book of stars as a reward, which is really nice. That would help towards our mastery levels. Once we take the book, let's take a look at our mastery setup. We're on level 2 at the moment, we have 3 more mastery levels to get. That means 3 more incredible perks await our character. 
We always get a price ticket every time we complete a community quest. That's why they're always worth doing if we've done them already. It's also a great way to get some friendship points. We just picked up a star drop tea there. That can be gifted to an NPC along with an additional gift. Totally overpowered. We're going to grab a house upgrade here with Robin. We're then back on the farm and we are going to cut down all of these mahogany trees. We're going to need tons of hardwood for the mushroom logs that we're going to build in a few seconds. The mushroom logs will generate mushrooms every four days. If we get a rainy day, it will take one off the cooldown, so you get them every three days. And it's really good just to accumulate tons and tons of mushrooms. It just means we can make a better use of the dehydrators as well. Once all the mushroom logs are placed, we're going to the mines. We're going to use our smelters. We need tons of bars for all different sorts of machinations that we're going to be creating over the next couple of weeks and months of this game. We're back in the greenhouse. It's a bit bare at the moment, but we will be filling it up with ancient fruit for this challenge. We're also going to be putting a lot more trees in here as well, so we're going to get access to all the fruits very soon. That is the first two ancient seeds put down, but that will very quickly multiply thanks to the seed makers. So we're going to purchase the movie tickets today. It's Ken's birthday. We're going to bring him to the cinema. That's going to get us some friendship points. We're also going to give him a star drop tea. That's more friendship points, getting up to three hearts. But we can also give him an additional gift. The rabbit's foot will get him straight up to six hearts. And we should be able to pull one more heart out of the cinema here as well. We're going to get him popcorn because he loves that. That's even more friendship points with Kent. We went and saw the natural wonders exploring our vibrant world. Kent liked it, which was good. After we had a chat with him, we now got him up to 7 out of 10 hearts in just one day. That is how potent that Star Drop Tea actually is. It is a pure game changer. We're also going to visit the old mariner here. We're going to pay 5,000 gold. He's going to give us the mermaid's pendant. And we are going to marry the new love of our life. That's right, Penny is going to be the wife of this new 1.6 challenge. Penny will make our food, feed our animals, pet our dog, fill his bowl, and more importantly... She will give us a star drop that we so desperately need in order to achieve perfection. We're going to buy some rhubarb today off Sandy and we're going to get a good stack of star fruit as well. It is time to really open up this ginger island farm and make good of all the space that we get. Ginger island is basically a giant greenhouse. We can use star fruit here for the whole year. No problem at all. We're back on the farm and it's time to get a lovely mystic syrup. These things are incredible. They sell for a thousand gold. And mystic seeds are pretty easy to make, so I will end up making a huge forest of these mystic trees. So with the syrup, I created a treasure totem. I used it, and it's totally overpowered. It generated a huge ring of artifact spots. I did waste it on the farm. You could imagine if you use this up in the mountains. Chances are you could very well get a dinosaur egg, for example. You could get a prismatic shard. So those totems can be quite overpowered, depending on where you use them. It's also a great way to get artifacts. We're now going to talk to Birdie here. She's going to send us on a massive chain quest in order for us to learn the fairy dust recipe. We have all the golden walnuts gotten already, so she's just going to give us a recipe for completing this quest. Now I have 114 key gems. I'm going to use all these gems to purchase recipes. I will need every single recipe in the game in order to get perfection. With the leftover golden walnuts, I'm able to buy even more key gems so I can even get more recipes. So we're talking to Kent again today. He's going to give us the tomato salt. We're going to give that to Gus. He'll give us the rose. We'll visit Sandy with the rose and she's going to give us a remote control. We'll bring that to George and George can give us an arctic shard. You can probably guess who that goes to. That's right, it's the wizard. And the wizard is going to give us a wriggly worm. We just bring that back to Willy with the pirate's locket. And then we can go straight back to Birdie with that. And she will teach us the lovely fairy dust recipe. That is one less recipe to worry about. I'm also going to make some heavy tappers today, put these on our lovely mystic trees. It just means I'm going to get that lovely mystic syrup twice as fast, because it does sell for an extraordinary amount of money. The next day, a lot of our crops have fully matured, so we're going to pluck them all up from the ground. I'm going to sell a good few of these, because I need to sell at least one of each item in the game in order to achieve perfection. At this moment in time, when I placed those mushroom logs, I didn't know how they fully worked. Just so you know, the mushroom logs are way better than what you see there. Depending on what tree they're surrounded by, they can generate different types of mushrooms. So I will make much better use of those during the next challenge. A lot of dehydrators were made, it's a bit of a waste, but I'm new to the 1.6, so we can't have perfect playthroughs just at the moment. So it is time for the wedding. We married Penny. 
everyone is celebrating, it's now time for kids, star drops, and all the other good stuff in between. Oak resins are now ready as well, that means more kegs for me. The more kegs we can make, the better that the more wine we can produce, the more money we can accumulate. We're also going back into the greenhouse here as well. I got some aged octopus roe. That will be needed for perfection, I just have to sell one of those for the produce shipped. It's Mayor Lewis's birthday today, we're going to give him a gift straight away. So we're going to be doing loads of gift giving in this challenge, because we need to get hearts up to learn recipes. We got some staircases and now I can finally get the anima catalogue, Book of Power from Marnie. And that can only be accessible when you have a pet on full hearts. Marnie will open up with that lovely catalogue. It's such an amazing Book of Power, definitely one of the best in the game. It just means we can access Marnie's store whenever she's not around. We all know that Marnie's never around. The Heavy Tappers are doing a great job. Already, three more Mystic Syrups. I will start accumulating those. I can trade those in for Fairy Dust later on. And that can speed up processing dramatically. I also gathered some Spring Onions here. Normally, I don't really pick up a whole lot of those. But every single bit of XP counts towards Mastery. We're going to reforge our foraging. It's just because I want to increase the price of syrups to see how good those mystic syrups can be. I purchased a void egg as well. We'll turn it into a void mayonnaise because we need to ship off at least one of those too. So we're going to go with biome balance today and we're going to do some fishing. We're also going to select a new mastery perk because we've got another skill. I was thinking of getting the mining mastery, the heavy furnace, the statue. It all seemed really good. But the farming master was also very exciting and I really want to try out the Iridium site. The Statue of Blessing sounded awesome as well. And those golden animal crackers sounded really good. Imagine combining those with golden chickens. Talk about an overpowered animal. So I got the farming mastery and I was given the Iridium site straight away. This means harvesting crops will be much faster now. That's much more time I have in the day. To respec and foraging we're going to go with Forester and then we're going to take Tapper. Syrups are worth 25% more. I just want to experiment with the mystic syrups to see how good they can be. We're getting more mushrooms today and I'm going to dehydrate a lot of those for loads of money. I'm also going to smelt a ton of copper today now using my furnaces. The statue of blessings is going to be very hard to make. The stone fibre and sap are easy enough but the moss is going to be incredibly hard. I need 333 moss, 999 sap, fibre and stone. That's very expensive and I imagine it's going to be quite the powerful statue if the resources are so high. Now I know I will get moss in summer. You are guaranteed one of those green rainy days where moss appears all over the place. So we will have to wait. I got a cursed mannequin today of one of the floaty skulls. These things are very scary indeed. <laughs> Not for the faint of heart. This is a male cursed mannequin. You can put items on it. And sometimes when you sleep, it moves around and sometimes it even growls at you. So I'm gonna put it here between my two regular mannequins and I'll put some clothes on it later. I met a bridal veil using a pearl and straight away it reminded me of that that cursed demon out of Annabelle Comes Home. I don't know if anybody's seen that but oh it just gives me the chills so bad. <laughs> I do love a good scare though. Biome balance has been completed. 1500 gold more importantly friendship points from Demetrius. The next morning the mannequin moved out one slot. It was so frightening. I wonder what else these cursed mannequins can do. We're just going to have to wait and find out. But these mannequins are a bit freaky. And it does make for a really good Halloween setup as well, or a spooky setup, if you're going for that sort of theme in your house. So it was Vincent's birthday today, we're going to give him the rabbit's foot. That's Vincent finally maxed out, which is really good. We just have to get Jazz's hearts up now, and we can learn the Spring Onion Mastery. It's time for another construction project. We're going to go with the big shed, because the bigger my sheds, the more kegs I can put inside, the more wines I can make, the more money we can bring in. Starfruit wine is still quite overpowered. A new quest, we have Danger in the Deep and Four Precious Stones. We'll take the Four Precious Stones because I have tons of prismatic shards at the moment. We're back in the volcano, picked up a dwarf hammer. Pales in comparison to my infinity weapon though, but the dragon scale boots were a welcome addition. Plus seven defense, we're going to equip those straight away as I was still using the space boots. So Linus now is going to teach us the wild bait recipe, which is really good for catching fish. It's still one of the best baits in the game in my opinion. And we're getting even more lovely mystic syrups today. But now these mystic syrups will sell for a little bit more. They're now going to sell for 1,250 gold instead of 1,000 gold. Thanks for lovely perks. I'm also going to make an oil maker because I need to turn a truffle into a truffle oil just for perfection. I also got the spring onion mastery as well. I get Jess's hearts up. Spring onions are now worth five times the gold, which is nice. The raccoon needs more help. He's going to give us something nice if we get dried strawberries. That's going to be tough. 
Well, not tough. Maybe just time-consuming because we don't have strawberries right now. The cherry jelly will be easy enough once our cherry tree grows inside the greenhouse. I'm going to buy lots of deluxe speed grow today. It is Thursday and Sandy does sell it for super cheap, way cheaper than Pierre. And we're going to bring that down to Ginger Island. This is going to dramatically speed up all of our crops for the remainder of the challenge. Because as the seasons change, the speed grow will remain. So it's a really good investment to put that down on your Ginger Island farm. We're going to purchase tons of rabbits today. The rabbit foot is a universal loved gift, so it would make sense to get lots of those if I want to maximize hearts on a faster pace. So we're going to get a magic rock candy today. Three prismatic shards is definitely worth it. It is the best consumable in the game. And we're farming dust sprites for the rest of the day. We need to focus on our monster eradication goals. We need to kill 500 of these little buggers. But because we have the parrot, it does make it worthwhile. Even no level enemies can drop really nice gold. I also picked up a golden animal cracker. This is my first one. Really excited. I can give this to any animal except a pig. And it will double its produce. I accidentally put it inside my octopus band. I was very displeased at myself. But it is what it is. At least I get double row going forward. It's time to put down more cakes. Our shed is now really big. And we're going to fill it up now with cakes. Now we're going to see some real money coming in. So I went to the traveling cart today. I'm going to pick up an albacore. The reason I got this is because I needed it for a quest. For the fish stew. I want to start completing all of the journal quests. Because they get extra friendship points. It was in back down killing dust sprites. Accumulating lots and lots of money. Coal is really handy as well in iron ores for making bombs. So we're going to get some strawberry seeds today at the Easter event. Now this is year two of the Easter event. I went here more of a curiosity than anything else to see if anything changed. And a few things changed. A few things kind of swapped placements. I didn't notice anything too much with the eggs to be honest. I don't think the eggs changed at all. I did win the event. But instead of getting a thousand gold. I got a prize ticket. I was really happy with that. The more prize tickets I can get. The better. It was then time to give Haley a rabbit's foot. Because it was her birthday. Now I didn't have any star drop tea, so she was going to have to wait. I just needed one more heart with her though. That'll be easy enough to get over the next couple of weeks. It was back to Robin now. We're going to make another build in here. This time I'm going to go for the mill because I have lots and lots of unmilled rice I got from the rice shoots. It'll just save me a little bit of money with Pierre. I just got the monster slayer goal there too for killing the dust sprites, which is really good. That would reward me with a burglar ring. It is Sunday, so we will trade in our jades for staircases. The more staircases we can get, the better. It was time for the year two desert event. This event spans over three days. We're going to go with the monster hunter. Slay 10 serpents, we get 35 calico eggs. We're also going to get the chef to make the rumpled fruit skin. That gives us a speed buff as well as a luck buff. And then it was straight into the skull cavern to see how deep we can get. The deeper that we're going to get here, the more calico eggs we're going to get. We can buy some amazing things with the eggs. For example, we can get skill books. We can get great things as well. We made it down to floor 100, but we didn't stop there. When I got down to the next floor, I got an auto grabber. I was really happy with that. I was also on the lookout for statues that you can click on that give you rank bonuses. And the higher your rank, the more rewards you're going to get. Now, when I came across the dinosaur floors, I did stop and kill them because I need to take these into consideration now for the monster eradication goals. These prehistoric floors can be quite rare. I got down to floor 300 and I was awarded with three chests, which was really good. Now, I didn't get anything too exciting in these chests. I mean, sure, the quality sprinklers would be nice if we went back one year. The rain totems can be handy, so I kept those. The biggest problem here now was I passed out, and I had a rank of 105. Because I passed out, I'm going to get nothing off guild the next day. I was so irritated by that, I didn't realise. I thought you could bring the rank into the next day and claim the prize before you go back in again, but I was wrong. So make sure when you're doing this event to go back to kill before 2 o'clock so you don't pass out and lose all those precious calico eggs. It was time to get another cactus. It was the cactus man again. This guy's so funny. He says, are you ready for a new cactus in your life? Absolutely. I won't say why, but this one is the perfect match for you. Look how happy the cactus is. <laughs> Who wouldn't be happy if you get to experience Stardew 1.6 and you can experience the game all over again. Alex was selling the magic hair gel. This was the trinket I actually couldn't find. So it was nice knowing that this is where you actually get it. And now it's not a combat trinket. All it does is give your hair the prismatic colors. Similar to the prismatic pants and the prismatic top. The great thing about the traveling card at the desert event. Is you can buy an unlimited amount of skill books. Provided you have the money to do so. It's an incredible way 
to get skill points if you have the money to do so. So I bought tons of woodcutter weeklies to get my master skill up. That was 27 woodcutter weeklies that I was going to spam here right now. And I had level 3 at the moment for mastery. This would get me straight up into level 4 where we get to choose another powerful mastery perk. The next day it was the usual gathering of Mystic Syrup. I didn't bother going back into the Skull Cavern, I was just so peed off with the whole rank system and I felt that I got enough skill books with the Calico Eggs, I just went back to the farm and the regular stuff the previous day. But today I found a good old pot of gold, when you look at that. It is Irish legend that if you do get to the end of a rainbow, you will get a pot of gold and a leprechaun. In this occasion, I got a leprechaun hat. Can't get any more Irish than that. <laughs> It was time to equip the leprechaun hat, I also had my magic hair gel and I was looking the part. Thank you Mr. Concerned Abe for incorporating some Irish lore into your fabulous Stardew Valley game. It was back to the desert event and Emily put some really cool clothes on me, they're all yellow. I didn't like the hat so I put back on the leprechaun hat straight away. And as far as I can remember, that hat will be worn throughout the rest of the challenge so get used to it. Clint was the NPC up today for selling stuff. He was selling coal, copper and iron ores. If I had the calico eggs, I would have purchased everything. So I spent a great deal of time today trying to win this race. I really wanted to win it before this year was finished. So I went with the cactus crawler. I had a good feeling about cactus crawler. I also spoke to an NPC over to the west side of the area and I got him to um, make sure that the escargot would not win. So it just gave me a 50% win chance instead of a, you know, like a 33% win chance. I won, but I only got 20 Calico Eggs, and I thought that was a bit main, considering that you don't have a great chance to win that event all the time, it happens every hour. So we're going to go with Tropical Fish today, we're going to go back to Ginger Island and do a little bit of fishing. Now, over on Ginger Island, we also had a massive farm of starfruit to collect. So we're going to pick all that up, and we're going to turn all that into starfruit wine. I also had some rhubarb down there as well. I finished up the four prismatic shard quests, and that was more key gems added to my lovely inventory. It was time to pick up a new quest. I went with Let's Play a Game again, but it didn't go too well this time. Now, I'm not going to show footage of it. Let's just say I didn't get the 50,000 I was hoping for, and after a few hours of trying, I just I just gave up with it. So I gave Pam a parsnip for her birthday. Pam actually loves parsnips. It's a nice, easy love gift for Pam early on. It was also time to convert all of our unmilled rice into regular rice. We will need rice to make some dishes later on when we're cooking up all the dishes for perfection. It was then back to Sandy to purchase another huge stack of starfruit. And all of that is going to turn into huge profits in a couple of days. We're going to put that on Ginger Island. Now we do end up making the Ginger Island farm bigger. For now though, I'm just saving up resources. I will make more Iridium Sprinklers as time goes on. So I'm going to get some more recipes today. We're going to get the banana pudding. And we'll also get the deluxe retaining soil. I paid a visit to the greenhouse today. I picked up another ancient fruit. That's going to go straight into the seed maker. And hopefully we'll get back maybe two or three seeds. So we can fill up the greenhouse even more. I'm also going to get some rice here. Back from our lovely mill. It's 153 rice in total. That's more than enough to start out any of the cooking recipes that need rice. We're going to give Pam another parsnip today as well. Just to get her friendship up. And we're going to go back to the statue of uncertainty. And this time we're going to respec our fishing skill. The reason why we're respecting fishing is because I want to go with some slightly different perks for different strategies. I got a void egg today off Krobus, but I only got that to give it back to him to get his friendship points up because he loves void eggs. So we're going to go to Willy today and I'm going to buy some crab pots. And the reason why I'm accumulating crab pots is because it's a great way to get some loved gifts for some of the NPCs. I also need some of the crab pot fish in order to make certain recipes. It was time to go back to the mastery cave. We're going to get fishing mastery this time. The advanced iridium rod is really good. We can now equip up to two bobbers at the same time, which is game breaking. We also get access to gold and treasure chests, and there's some amazing things you can get in those treasure chests. The rest of the day, we're just fishing up ginger and fish to get the community quest done. So we're going to go with lore master now. Crab pots no longer require bait because it's a pain to having to put bait into them every single day. So we're going to visit the forge today. We're going to enchant our advanced iridium rod. I just want to get the master enchant which gives me a plus one to fishing skill, which makes my bar a bit bigger. I think it's the best enchant you can get. The auto hook is handy, you know, for the less challenging fish. But when you're doing endgame fishing, you're going to be going for hard fish. There's no point getting auto hook, to be honest. And efficient is a waste because by the time you're endgame fishing, energy just won't be a problem for you. So in my opinion, go with master. It's the pro choice. 
So we are going to get all of the lovely auto grabber animal products today. We have a mountain of eggs inside here. I do attempt to process some into mayonnaise, but then I said to myself, it's very time consuming because I had so many eggs. So I just end up selling the rest of them to make loads of money. Leo is going to move into town. The parrots have prepared his house, which is nice. So I sold the void mayonnaise there too, because I need that for perfection. You have to sell at least one of those. And I just sold all the unprocessed eggs as well, just to make extra funds. Willie sent me on a deluxe fish tank this morning. That was nice of him. We could put some fish in that. We can also put anchors now and treasure chests inside the fish tanks too, to make them look even way nicer. The strawberries were also fully matured. I'm going to use my iridium site here to harvest them all up. And I can now make some dried strawberries to give to the raccoon. That'll take a whole day though. I now have even more mystic trees set up, so I'm getting more mystic syrups. All of the periwinkles, the snails, the crayfish, they'll be put to good use now, especially when it comes to making those recipes later on. I got a price ticket for completing the Ginger Island fishing quest. We're going to go to Pierre today. We're going to set him all these mushrooms. Now, I could put them in the dehydrator, but I was a bit lazy. I just wanted money because the book merchant was in town, and I wanted to purchase skill books off him. Now, I didn't realize that I was very close to getting the last mastery level so when i took this combat quarterly it said you've reached a new level of understanding and that was the last mastery level needed that was now level five mastery so i maxed out everything and it was time to get the final perk we're gonna go with the mining mastery of course statue of the dwarf king the heavy furnace and gem brain rocks now grant twice the resources which is amazing i also got a really cool image here of grandpa's hat that appeared and i thought it was really cool you know it's just kind of another gesture that Grandpa is really proud of you for the hard work you're doing around Stardew Valley. The statue of the Dwarf King requires 20 Iridium Bars to make. I can tell you right now, it is absolutely worth it. You get some amazing perks off it. Statue of Blessings will be made eventually and you can get some really good perks off that too. My advice, if you have the resources, make those two statues immediately. So we're back down to the regular mines. We're farming up slimes today because I want to get that slime charm ring. We're focusing more now on monster eradication goals. Having the parrot there is really helpful. It's just an extra incentive to go down and start killing monsters because you're making really good profits at the same time. There's also a chance we can get golden mystery boxes and animal crackers off killing these enemies. So it's definitely worth going down wiping them out. We get the dried strawberries today. It's actually worth a nice bit of money, almost 1300 gold. I'm going to put in some bananas and some mangoes into these dehydrators. I want to see how profitable they can be. I'm also going to pick up another community quest. We're going to go with a curious substance. I actually haven't completed that quest yet. And upon completion, I will get the mini obelisks, which I don't have just yet. We're then going to go back into Key's secret walnut room. We're going to pick up the extended family quest. And I'm now going to show you an absolutely crazy exploit to make tons of gold in this game using... The extended family quest. We all know you can pull up an unlimited amount of legend 2s with that quest, but I'm going to show you using the new fishing mastery skills just how broken it is. For now we're going to make a statue of the dwarf king. That's going to have some really good perks now so going down into the mines will be even more lucrative for us. We're going to pick up all these iridium bars. We're going to keep a lot of those now for crafting stuff in the future. Today we have a choice of greater chances to find ladders and shafts in the mines, or a greater chance to find coal. Any one of those perks while doing a good Skull Cavern run is going to give you way better rewards. So I look forward to utilizing those perks for future Skull Cavern runs indeed. So we're doing some fishing today after pulling up a Legend 2 here. It was quite the battle. But you see, we can smoke this and we can get an unlimited amount of Legend 2s while the Extended Family Quest is active. Because I'm using the Quality Bobber, I get an Iridium Star Legend 2 now. It's only worth 10,000 gold, but it will be worth 15,000 when I respect my fishing. I also pulled up a Star Drop Tea from a Golden Fishing Trest, which is absolutely amazing. So fishing has never been better. Using Wild Bait, I pulled up two Legend 2s that are on. I ended up getting 10 or 11 of these Legends by the end of the day, which is really good. I'm not going to smoke them and set them straight away. We're going to get the Angler here. Fish worth 50% more. We're now going to smoke all these up. And we are going to make some serious money. 210,000 gold there. Just for a handful of smoked Legend 2s. One was set for 42,000 gold. Because you get two perks from that fish. You get the Artisan perk. Which increases its worth by 40% because it's smoked. We also benefit from the Angler perk. Which is a 50% increase in value. 
That's a 90% increase in the value right there, which is just totally broken altogether. I can definitely see that being nerfed though. I think it's a bit too broken. Penny wants a baby. Who am I to say no? Of course, Penny. Let's bang one out. So let's move on and look at the money we get here for Sunday's Legends. 882,000 gold from two days of fishing up these Legend 2s. It's absolutely amazing. It's just totally broken. Fishing is now officially broken in Stardew Valley. You want to make some money? Just do some fishing. Early game, mid game, end game fishing is extremely profitable. I had a dance with the wife today. We got to keep the wife happy, especially if she's pregnant because those hormones can go straight through you. Trust me on that. I finally got a star job for being a good husband off Penny. That is the last star job we needed in order to achieve perfection. It is time for another strawberry harvest. This will be the last harvest of strawberries. We'll sell all those directly. And we're going to get even more starfruit wine today from all these lovely kegs. I just got more fairy dust inside a golden fishing treasure chest. Those golden fishing treasure chests are absolutely amazing. I cannot say this enough, but fishing is just broken right now. I got Kent to break open a ton of gold mystery boxes. I got some really good stuff inside, including a nice book of stars. I got some golden pumpkins, triple shot espressos, bombs, cool wallpaper. Just nice stuff all around. So we're back in the mines today to get the ectoplasm to complete the community quest for the wizard. I just got it off the ghost there. And I'm going to kill more dust sprites soon to get some coal and what have you. After gifting the wizard the ectoplasm, we're not finished there. I did bring some solar essences with me just to get some extra friendship points as well. It was then time to sell a load of crops and make some nice hefty money. So as we can see, I made 346,000 gold just from selling some starfruit wine today. It's still extremely profitable. I made some caviar as well because we need that for the produce achievement. I got the mini obelisk the next day off our lovely Rasmodius. Then it's time to visit Pierre. But we're going to gift him a rabbit's foot today because it's his birthday. This brings him straight up to almost 10 or 10 hearts. The star drop tea finishes him off. We now officially don't have to talk to Pierre anymore. Let's all thrive with Georgia. Let's make some heavy furnaces today. We're also going to make a big stone chest as well. Because it's just bigger than the regular chest. More space. These heavy furnaces are just so good. Not only are you saving coal, but you're saving tons of time because these furnaces will take 25 ores for every single big heavy furnace that you have. So we now only need a handful of these heavy furnaces and the hundreds and hundreds of ores that we have quickly be whittled down into stacks and stacks of bars within seconds. It's just such a great furnace. And it was something that was needed so badly. Days of making hundreds of furnaces are now over, thanks to the heavy furnace. We're back over on Ginger Island. We're getting more star fruits, of course. That will all be converted into star fruit wine. This is the main method that we will be using to get the gold clock. Star fruit is still extremely potent. There are other money makers in the game, but it's just very hard to beat the sheer volumes of money that star fruit can bring in. We're going to purchase more stacks of star fruit seeds now off Sandy today, and then we're going to visit Desert Trader. Because it's Sunday, that means it's staircase time. I had a lot of jades assembled. I got some more down in the mines as well. That's 71 more staircases for me. We're going to go to Robin and we're going to build a slime hutch. Slime hutches are now much smaller and they offer the same perks. So it was a no-brainer to get that. Back down to the regular mines, I finally got the Monster Slayer achievement for those Void Spirits. I was almost there now with the Monster Slayer hero. All I needed was just some mummies, some magma sprites and some serpents. So a few visits to the Volcano Dungeon, a few visits to Skull Caverns, and we more or less have that achievement in the bag. We could also get some very powerful rings for some of the goals we've completed so far. The Burglar Ring is really good. Monsters have a chance to drop an extra loot. The Savage Ring is a magnificent ring, speed buff for killing monsters. And the Slime Charmer Ring will nullify damage from any slime. So they're all magnificent rings. We're now in summer. It is time to abuse the Star Fruits yet again. Now we don't have a whole lot of crop space on our farm, but not to worry, we can rely on Ginger Island for that. So we're going to donate the strawberry fruit, and we're going to donate the cherry jelly to the raccoon. He's going to give us a star drop tea, and as we can see, the raccoon now has a family of little mini raccoons. It's just so cute. Time for another community quest. We'll go with aquatic overpopulation. I just don't want to be growing radishes on the farm, because we don't have a whole lot of space. So I got a magic rock candy today. For doing the prize tickets. I also picked up another star drop tea. Those prize tickets are just insanely powerful. You know, they're definitely worth seeking out. 
We're going to go with four precious stones again because it's 40 easy key gems because I have so many prismatic shards now. I quickly ran back to my farm, picked up the prismatic shards, went back into the secret walnut room and it was quest complete on the same day. No hassle at all, 62 key gems ready to be spent. We're going to go with the blue grass starter recipe. It's such an overpowered grass. We are then back to gift giving. Evelyn is going to get a rabbit's foot today. We're working on friendship points. She's 6 out of 10 hearts. We're not going to stop there though. We're going to go straight down here now to Maru. We're going to give her a rabbit's foot. And then we're going to go straight up to our lovely Harvey. Doctor of the year of course. And we're going to give him a pearl. This is something I should have focused more on in the first year. It would save me a lot of time for 200 days. But it has to be done. If we want to learn all of the recipes. We need to get friendship up with all of these NPCs. The rest of the day we just spend fishing up some rainbow trout to do that aquatic population quest. If any NPCs cross my path that haven't been gifted, I just give them a gift straight away for that extra friendship points. I got some money for the aquatic population, but more importantly, I got a prize ticket. And the more prize tickets I can get, the better. Linus also got a rabbit's foot today, and it was back then converting more starfruit into starfruit wine. Story of my life. You're going to see lots of scenes of me converting starfruit into starfruit wine. Here is a lovely line of NPCs coming back from Ginger Island, and I've got lots of gifts lined up to give to all these NPCs. Even went to Jody's house, and I turned a large amount of bass on the ground for a quest, and they were very happy with that. I never actually done this quest with Kent in the house, so it was good to see some dialogue from Kent as well. <laughs> nice one Kent, he caught his own fish. Kent needs a whole fish to himself. We were doing the volcano dungeon today, and I was doing it just to get the kill count up on these magma sparklers and magma sprites. I needed to kill about 50 of these in total. I got a basilisk pod dropped there to trinket. It just makes you immune to any debuffs. I don't think it's worth it though. There's not a whole lot of debuffs that go around in the game. It might be good for certain parts. Penny wanted to impress and do up my room. I said go with the forest and moon, you know, the peaceful blue. What I didn't take into consideration at this moment in time is that Penny would get rid of all of my mannequins, all of the items I had on the ground, all of the paintings I had on my wall. She would get rid of everything. She did say at the end, in all fairness, if I have stuff lying around to put it in the chest, I should have taken that seriously. The slime hutch was built. I had one slime roaming around at the moment. I put a red slime egg I got from Scott Cavern into it. So that'll hatch in a few days and hopefully they'll start making little slime babies. I went to the quarry, I'm going to clear this whole section. We'll start by mining up all of the ores, then we'll move on to the trees, knock them all down, and then I'm going to fill up this whole area with seeds, because I need a lot more wood to make a lot more cakes. I could buy wood off Robin, but I prefer to save my money. I'm going to buy a portrait of Penny. What better way can you honour your wife by getting a portrait of her and just putting it in the house? <laughs> I had a chat with the raccoons today and they're doing great. I thought all of the little raccoon babies were just so cute. So nice to see the cute raccoon family all happy and cosy. So I'm going to make some ginger ale today using key seasoning. That's more luck for me. I was going to make more staircases as well. I was on my way to Skull Cavern but I got the green rain. So we're not going to do a Skull Cavern run today. Instead we are going to harvest every single piece of moss that Stardew Valley has to offer today. So we're going to run around with our sight and our sword and we are just going to take up all of this lovely, lovely moss. With the amount of moss I get today, I'll easily be able to make that statue of blessings. I had a chat with Linus too and he said he's really happy with all the moss he got. I thought if I gifted him moss he'd appreciate it but he said this doesn't really do much for me. And I just under I don't understand that because he just taught me a few seconds earlier that he loves moss. I went up to the bathhouse area as well, get rid of all the weeds up here. I was really hoping to find a secret today with the moss, so I ended up going to literally every zone the game had to offer to see if this green rain activated any sort of special cutscenes or if any sort of special monsters spawned or special NPCs. But as far as I can tell, it was just that there's loads of grass around, there's loads of moss around. So I made a statue of blessings, I'm gonna put that down straight away. When I clicked on it, I got a very powerful buff. I got a plus one to look. That is absolutely amazing. And if you combine that with the statue of the Dwarf King, you're going to get some serious results in the Skull Cavern. I woke up the next day to a nice cozy room that Penny had made. She even handcrafted the moon and the stars. I loved the bed. I loved the floor. I loved everything about the room. What I didn't like is that she got rid of all of the other stuff that was lying around the place. Little did I know, though, at the time, 
that she packed it on the way in the chest. I thought it was gone forever. So today we're going to get some perks from our statues, plus one to luck again, and plus one to ores. We're now going to go down into the Scott Caverns. I have my Magic Rock Candy. I have my Key Seasoned Ginger Ale. i got staircases. It is time for a serious Skull Cavern run. I was dishing down a few levels I already picked up an Iridium Sprinkler. It was really nice. I got the Monster Stair Gold for the Mummies. Super happy with that. When I made it down to Florida Hunt, I got some Farmer's Lunches. Wow. <laughs> that was a joke. I wasn't too impressed with that, to be honest. I just ended up selling those, actually. I did whack open all the barrels, hoping for a lucky ring. I don't actually end up getting a lucky ring out of a chest in this challenge. But I do get more than a handful by panning. I got a golden animal cracker. These are actually quite rare, so I was very excited to get that. I do hope they become more common though. Today was a really good run. I got tons of resources, tons of iridium ore, tons of monster loot. Taking the frog with me was a mistake, because every time he swallowed up a serpent, it didn't count towards the monster eradication goal. So my advice, only use the frog if you're not working on monster eradication goals, and if you really don't like combat, he's handy that way, he just gobbled him up. But you don't get monster loot. So I give a rabbit the golden animal cracker, in the hopes that I get two rabbit limbs now instead of one. And I'm also going to give Gus Rabbit's foot today because it was his birthday. This maximizes his friendship. We're then back to Ginger Island. We want to harvest even more star fruit. And this process is rinsed and repeated until I basically have 10 million gold <laughs> to get a gold clock. I probably would have had it by now if I had a lot more crop space on the regular farm. But I didn't realize how little crop space you would have on the Meadowlands farm. I know you get the blue grass, but... I don't think the farm is that powerful compared to the other farm types. I still think the standard farm is one of the most potent farms in the game for making money. So I finally picked up the quest today from Linus to pull up some trash to learn the fibre seeds. That's what I spend my whole evening doing here. I also got the ornate necklace. So you can give that to either Abigail or Caroline, depending on who you want to get friendship points with. We end up giving it to Caroline because we need to get more friendship points with her to max her out. If you can believe it, I still did not learn the tea saplings from Caroline. I haven't been to her sunroom yet. <laughs> if this was any other challenge before 1.6, I would have had that learnt a long time ago. It was time for another shit upgrade and we're back to fishing up trash. Once all of the trash has been accumulated, I'm going to put all that into a bin and get the fibre seeds. We're also going to stack up on more starfruit wine. And during the night, Penny gave birth to a baby girl. And I'm going to go with a good Irish name here. I'm going to go with Fia. It's actually a very common Irish name at the moment, and I think it's quite cute. So our new baby is going to be called Fia. We love you, Fia. For those of you who are wondering what a baby crit is, you will see that very soon. But for now, Fia is sleeping, so we're going to let her rest. The heavy furnaces are the godsend. 72 iridium bars, just like that, and it didn't take days to produce. They're going to sell for some serious money. I give Maru rabbits for today because it was her birthday. That's Maru maxed out. 8 out of 8 hearts. I'm also going to pick up some raisins today. And I got these from Drano Grapes. Junimos love these. If you put these into a Junimo hut, they will gather extra crops for you, which is really cool. I also figured out a secret by re reading the wiki. If you put a staircase in Mary Lewis's bedroom, you go down into this maze here. And you have to make your way through the maze to get these lucky purple shots. Now, you can still get them from Marnie by going into Marnie's room. This is just another way you can get them if you don't like the whole friendship mechanic of Stardew Valley. Once I picked up the lucky purple shards, I started to get attacked by these floaty purple shards. I thought it was the funniest thing I've seen in a long time. Thankfully, you can actually parry these shards just so you know. You can't fight them, don't bother, but you can parry them. So when it gets close, if you have a, a sword weapon, just right click, parry, and you'll deflect the shards so you won't take damage. It was then time for another secret. I put an ancient doll into floor 100 here of the regular mines. This really cool skeletal dragon popped up and I got a stone here called a faraway stone. I knew straight away what to do with this because I found a new structure during my 100 day challenge with the wizard. So I went straight over to the wizard's tower with this to see what would happen. Before I went to the wizard's tower, I was going to check up on the raccoons to see if they needed anything. And of course, our lovely raccoon friend did. The raccoon wanted a radish juice and a pickled tomato. They'll be easy enough to make, and we'll have those in just a few days. It was also really nice to see all of the baby raccoons again. It was just so cute. 
The wizard gave me a quest ages ago, looking for Avoidus, so I gave him one for the quest, I gave him a second one then for the friendship points. That got him up to 8 out of 10 hearts, which is really nice, we're almost there with the wizard. So I put the faraway stone into this uh, pedestal here, down in the basement of the wizard's tower, and a, a portal popped up and a cat came out. Now I've never played Terraria, so I don't really know what this means, but apparently I read that it was a collaboration between Stardew Valley and Terraria. I got a sword called the Meowmir, I absolutely love the name of it. The wizard came down, he said, don't touch that, <laughs> but it's too late, I already have the sword. I checked out the stats on the sword, and I mean, it's not the strongest sword in the world, but by god, it is probably one of the coolest swords I've seen in Stardew Valley, it just looks so awesome. Having a look at the stats, it has 20 to 20 damage, plus 4 speed and plus 2 weight. It's a really nice starter weapon, unfortunately by the time you get to 100 in the mines, you already have the obsidian edge, so it's not really, you know, it doesn't really have a function combat wise. So I went to the Luo today, and a few things have changed. The potluck has changed locations, and I'm pretty sure some of the NPCs have different dialogue as well. I did have a gold star cauliflower. We're going to put that straight into the soup, and I'm going to get tons of friendship points now. I just got the beloved farmer there, which is really nice. That's going to help me in my quest to max out all of the friendships of all of the Stardew Valley NPCs. There was a help wanted quest, but one of the prizes was a prized ticket. They have become quite rare. I do check the help wanted quests all the time. And the prize tickets never pop up, such a rarity. I spent a good deal of time today pulling up carps because I really wanted to get that prize ticket. Handed the carps over to Willy. He was super happy, more friendship points with Willy, but more importantly, a prize ticket for me that I could bring into Mary Lewis's house and get dubbed more prizes. The food at Georgia Mart might not be the healthiest for my family, but with such low prices you'd be crazy to shop anywhere else. Thank you, Jody, Georgia, for the win everyone. So we're back in the Volcano Dungeon today, and we're farming up Magma Sprites and Magma Sparkers. I took away the frog, because I do not want him to gobble them up. I need to get the kill counts. Even if I wasn't going for Monster Eradication goals, it's still worth my time to come in here, because I can still get some really nice stuff from the chests. I got some gold and coconuts there. They're not too bad, you can get some nice things from them, like saplings. The blessing today was 10% increased crit rate. That's absolutely amazing, especially for high crit bills. The first batch of starfruit was ready, so we're going to harvest all that up now and that would all be converted into starfruit wine for even more money. So we're up on 2.4 million gold at the moment. We're going to start by purchasing a big shit here from Robin. This is just pennies to us now at the moment. We're also going to go to Ginger Island. A lot of the summer crops are ready. Radishes, wheat, blueberries, summer spangles, hot peppers. A lot of these will be saved for recipes. And a lot will also be sold so we can get the 100% on the produce shipments. I also got a lot of ancient fruits today. They're going to be converted back into ancient fruit seeds. As we can see, we're now getting a multiplier effect. Soon enough, that greenhouse will be filled up to the top with ancient fruit. We're going to make 75 kegs today. They're going to be going into the big shade. I'm going to blow away all the trees here now up at the quarry. So I can get tons of wood so I can make even more kegs. I also get bits of moss there as well which is really nice. It's just so satisfying having a good bang to spring. Sucking up all the resources so we can blow it all down. So we're going to go with another community quest today. We finally get island ingredients. We're going to take this one straight away because we still haven't learned the solar panels. And we need that in order to get perfection. Jody wants a coconut 300 gold, but we're taking it because it makes Jody happy, and I want to max her out soon enough. Crobus loves wild horse radishes. We're going to give him the horse radish, and we're also going to give him a star drop tea. You put him up to nine or ten hearts, which is very nice. Just one more heart to go with good old Crobus. Jody was chilling over on Ginger Island today, so I give her the coconut, put her on eight out of ten hearts. It was then time to start pulling up these gingers. I needed to farm and sell a hundred of these in total. So I would have to go to Ginger Island every single day and hunt down these gingers. There's a good few places where they can grow. But the dig site area here is a great place for them. It's time for another key quest. I was looking at Key's crop. I said no, I need the space for star fruits. We'll go with Key's kindness. I'm working on friendship anyway. So it was just extra motivation for me to give love gifts to the NPCs. So another big shed has now been installed. We're going to fill it up with kegs and then we're going to fill those kegs up with starfruit. I had tons of starfruit ready to be processed. And there was still more room for more kegs because I just hundreds and hundreds of starfruit assembled. I got a new blessing today. Blessing of the butterfly. It has a prismatic butterfly 
is waiting for you somewhere. I also got a weird looking truffle here. It was basically a truffle crab. Quite rare. I killed it and I got two truffles. So that was a cool little secret there that the pig found. Another cool change added to 1.6. I gave Linus a prismatic shard today that maxed him out. I spent the rest of the day looking for this prismatic butterfly. I couldn't find it anywhere. I ended up gifting a ton of gifts today for all of the NPCs that came out of uh, Ginger Island. I noticed Gus was with them and I was just kicking myself in the foot because I really need to chop the curry. I still haven't gotten that off Gus. The rest of the day was just spent giving NPCs more gifts. I had lots of rabbit's foots. I had other bits and bobs too. For example, I had coffee to give to um, Harvey. I had peaches to give to Robin. I had oranges here that I can give to Gus as well. Getting friendship up is very important because you also get gifts in the mail, which is cool. I finally entered Caroline's secret sunroom. She said, what do you think? I said, <laughs> not as good as my farm. And I never really said that before. I just wanted to see how she'd react. And then she said, oh, but you're a professional. This is just a hobby. No excuses, Caroline. No excuses. <laughs> We're back farming up starfruit, converting it back into starfruit wine. And finally, the next day, we learn the tea sapling. And if you're wondering why I haven't abused tea saplings, it's because they got nerfed. They got nerfed bad. They were worth 500 gold a pop, another 250 gold. Hardly worth the effort. I'm getting fairy dust here now from helping out the raccoon. Seven, which was really nice. I will keep those. I'll use them eventually. I had a look to see if the raccoon's wife had any extra items in stock, and she didn't. I think that's the extent now of her stock. We're pulling up more ginger today. I do need 100, so it's going to be quite the farm to get that. It will take the bones of a whole month. I'm using some fairy dust here to speed up the production so I can get some pale ales. I'm going to sell a few. I'm going to keep one to give to Pam because I have a quest to give Pam a pale ale. She's been asking for it now since summer year one. So it's about time I make good my promise. I'm going to purchase all of the obelisks today. The island obelisk, the earth, the desert obelisk and the mountain obelisk. I have the funds, I have the resources and we do need them for perfection. It will use up most of our money but it can't be helped. We have to get the obelisks. So I'm now going to start setting up fridges. I'm going to start storing items so I can assemble all of the recipes. This is going to be the fruit fridge. And all of the stuff here came from primarily my fruit trees inside the greenhouse. I'm also going to get all of the animal products here out of the auto grabber. Quite a number of items have been assembled. I sell a lot of those to make money and I'll keep some for recipes. We're back in the volcano dungeon again. I'm almost there now with the kill count for those magma enemies. I just have to kill a few more, and we will have the Master Stair Gold achieved. And there we have it. Master Stair Gold done. We can now see Gil to get some extra perks for item retrieval. I also got a note here saying, I heard you're working on a very special challenge. I have the perfect solution to help you out. Meet me in the watery cave on Ginger Island, Fizz, Georgia Special Services Division. So Fizz will basically give us perfection waivers for half a million gold each. Each waiver will count towards... 1% of perfection. Those waivers can be quite handy if you're very close to perfection, but you just don't want to either purchase the golden clock or you don't want to get an obelisk or you just don't want to cook all the recipes. So it is a nice way to just pay yourself to perfection. I'm saying no at the moment because I don't think I'll need the waivers. I think they'll be more or less good to get everything I need without getting them, but it's good that it's there if you get stuck down the road. I'm also going to pay 500,000 gold now to upgrade Pam's trailer because I am married to her daughter and I do want my wife's family to have a more comfortable life. And I can't imagine it would be too comfortable living in the trailer all the time, especially during winter time. I now had some mini fridges set up. I had one for fish, one for fruit, one for crops and I had one then for kind of miscellaneous items. And the main fridge then had just regular items that you could buy from Pierre's shop. You know, it had rice, it had sugar, vinegar, oil, things like that. They're needed for quite a lot of recipes. It was then back to Ginger Island and I was hoeing up even more ginger because I really needed to learn that solar panel. For perfection, you needed to craft every item in the game to contribute towards perfection. It was then time to go down into Skull Caverns, but I wasn't really focused on getting down to the floors to get resources. I was more focused on killing serpents. So I also took a monster musk to increase the spawn rate of monsters and I had a great time. I had the parrot with me as well, so I was getting lots of gold from killing monsters. It was time to look at the auto grabber here inside one of our big barns, and there was tons of milk in here. I needed to convert the milk into cheese. Cheese was needed to sell all of the items in the game at least once. It was also needed for some of the recipes. 
it was then back to Ginger Island to pull up some more ginger. I also had to look at the key quests, and I decided to do a Skull Cavern invasion because I still needed to kill more serpents for the monster eradication goals, so I might as well hit two birds with one stone. I also gave the dwarf a rabbit's foot. That was the lovely dwarf maxed out. And we're also going to take Cave Patrol here with Clint. He wants me to kill 50 dust sprites. And dust sprites are now even way more fun to kill because now I'm getting lots of golden mystery boxes. I'm getting coffee beans. I'm getting coal off them. There's lots of iron ore down here as well. And I'm getting money from killing them. So combat is just so much fun now. The trinkets. 6,000 gold for doing that quest. And it was now time to look at the ginger. I had 75 harvested at the moment. I just had to harvest 25 more and then sell it all to get that solar panel. I got blessings of waters today. The first three fish you hook today will be much easier. That is actually quite potent if you pair it up on a day you can do some hardcore fishing. So I had a chat with Robin today. She finished off the house upgrade. The trailer was gone and a beautiful new house was now put in its place. And Robin felt pretty good about it. She then said, why didn't you tell your wife about this game of gar? Because I love surprises, Robin. I love surprising my wife. Gamer Garrett came up with this idea and paid for the whole thing. To be honest, this is kind of embarrassing. How can I ever repay you for this? And then I said, you're my mum, no repayment needed. And it's absolutely true. <laughs> the mother of my wife is my mother. Especially when she gives me two to three dinners per week. Can't complain. It was time to do more gift giving. George got rabbit's foot there as well. And it was off with the Iridium side getting more ancient fruit. 15 in total. All that will be turned back into ancient fruit seeds. And this is going to fill up the greenhouse even more. Eventually, we will start to profit very nicely from all of this ancient fruit. But for now, we're still better off to just keep multiplying it by putting it into seed makers. I just needed a few more kills now on these serpents and I would have another monster eradication goal done. I picked up a fairy box trinket there as well. That just summons a fairy that occasionally heals you when you're in combat. It's worth noting that it does not heal you when you're outside of combat. So I just got the monster eradication goals there for both the Rexes and the Serpents. That was more or less all of the monster eradication goals completed. DJ Guardian gave birth to a baby pig. Well done DJ Guardian, I knew you had it in you. <laughs> it was then time to process more starfruit into starfruit wine. And now I'm going to accumulate all this wine and sell it in one huge batch in the next week or two. It was time to change up the barber style. I'm going to go with the, the golden cow cracker here in the hopes that it would increase my odds to get more cow crackers just so you know it doesn't <laughs> it was also time to enchant my iridium pan there's loads of enchants you can put on this let's have a look at some of them fisher is one of them with this you have a chance to pull up a fish it is quite rare and if you don't have that fish caught already it still won't count towards the capture of that fish archaeologist is cool that would be very handy if you're still going for the um, museum quests generous is probably the best one there in my opinion because you just get more bang for your buck. Just look at that right there. A lucky ring straight off the bat, even with a houseplant. Can't say no to a houseplant. But let's look at that lucky ring. Plus one to luck. That is the second lucky ring of this challenge. Lucky rings are now common with the Iridium Pan. It is just so good. So overpowered. More ancient fruit seeds today are being planted. And we're back into Sandy. We're going to get a full stack of starfruit seeds to go back to Ginger Island with... So I kind of messed up the bee houses here. I should have swapped them around. I put the fair roses to the right and then the bee houses to the left. That was my bad. It was a noobish mistake. My excuse, I haven't properly played Stardew Valley in quite some time because I was waiting for 1.6 to come out. I was with other games like Pal World and Hollow Knight and things like that. So there's my excuse for that. <laughs> Just take it easy on me in the comments, please. We have 87 key gems now. We're going to purchase some pressure nozzles. This will dramatically increase the range of our Iridium Sprinklers, meaning a lot more space on our Ginger Island farm. So I reworked the Ginger Island farm. I'm also going to put down Speed Grow as well. All of our sprinklers now are set up with pressure nozzles. So we have way more space now to put down Starfruit. It just means more money for us because I really want to speed things up now when it comes to making the 10 million gold to get the gold clock. I didn't have enough time last night to plant out of Starfruit. I eventually just passed out. So I'm going to finish off the work today. Not to worry though, there was just a few spots I had to hoe and I was good to go. Back in the farm we're collecting jades, collecting bait. We're also pulling up tons of new starfruit. This is the last batch of starfruit now before we head into fall. We're also going to talk to the raccoon here as well. We're going to give him the items he wants. Now he's looking for five crayfish and he's looking for a smoked salmon. 
Now I wanted to test this, said smoked salmon, but I wanted to see would he take any sort of smoked fish, and he will. I tried giving him a smoked crayfish and that actually substituted as a smoked salmon. So as long as you have a smoked anything, it would work for now, but that could be patched out in the future. I finally completed the island ingredients quest. I was so excited about this. 3000 gold, but we do get the recipe for the solar panels. It was now time to show you how the baby crit works. So you just keep throwing the baby up in the air and it's a certain chance it will activate. Eventually you'll get a critical throw and you'll toss the baby straight up into the ceiling and the baby will come back down. Do not attempt this in real life, especially with a, a newborn baby. Take it from me, folks. The solar panel recipe was out the next day. That can auto-generate batteries and the best place to put that is out in the desert because you don't get rainy days out in the desert. We were then in fall. We're going to hoe up the ground and prepare the land for new fall crops. I do need to ship off at least one of each fall crop in order to get the achievement for shipping off all of the produce the game has to offer. So we're going to have to ship off the eggplant, artichoke. I've already shipped off a few pumpkins, but we will need the other stuff as well. We're then going to water up the crops, and it's just so nice having the iridium tools because it just saves you so much time. Finally maxed out Caroline's hearts by giving her enough rabbit's limbs. We also maxed out George as well, and we maxed out Marnie. So we're really getting there now with the gift giving. It was time for another key quest. We're going with extended family again, and we will absolutely abuse this by pulling up Legend 2s. Now, there was a gold fishing chest right there. I managed to nab that, and I also managed a Legend design. I'm just going to speed it up here to show you how difficult it is to actually pull up a Legend 2. The good thing is that time stands still, but if you were doing this in co-op mode, half the day would be gone by the time you capture one of these. They're just so hard to capture. It is quite doable though, especially with the new advanced rods. I got a woodcutter's weekly inside it as well, which was nice. And we're going to smoke up all those legends to make tons of money. 42,000 gold apiece, it's half a million gold right there for us fishing for one day. We maxed out Sebastian today by giving him a rabbit's foot. And we're getting some radioactive bars and iridium bars from our Scott Cavern Invasions run, which is nice. I'm going to keep those because I need radioactive bars to make some of the stuff. For perfection, we need to craft all items in the game. Now, Clint gave me a quest here to kill grubs. That's what we're doing today. We're wiping out grubs. But I do have the parrot, so I do get extra money for that as well. So, I managed to get an owl statue today. They're quite rare, so it was nice to pick that up. We're also going to talk to the wizard today, give him a rabbit's foot. And I also had a chat with him. 8 out of 10 hearts with the wizard. We will have him maxed out in the next couple of weeks. All of the kegs I have down at the Ginger Island farm is a pure game changer. I actually don't have a bed inside the Ginger Island farm, I just use it as a big storage shit. The workbench for 2000 gold is absolutely worth it. Any chest connected to that workbench shares its inventory. So if you have 3 or 4 chests attached to that workbench, you can fill up all those chests with items and then you can just access the workbench to craft instead of pulling items directly into your inventory. So when it comes to crafting all the items in the game, I cannot recommend the workbench enough. As we can see, I have three big chests connected to my workbench. I have one for mining materials, one for wood and forageables and other bits and bobs, another one for monster loot and miscellaneous materials. So I will fill them up now tonight, and the next day, I'm going to craft one of each item. I believe I do have all of the recipes assembled. I do sell most of the stuff, or bin most stuff I do craft. I keep a few bits and bobs, because I'm not going to use any of that stuff, and I'm just take up precious space. I do keep the big stone chest up because I have use for that. Once I make the glowstone ring, I do get the craft master achievement. I already had a lot of stuff from that list already created. And if you're not too sure on what you've crafted and what you haven't, you can always open up the options menu and you can get it to show how many times you've crafted an item. And it'll also show if you haven't crafted an item. So it's just a nice handy way to kind of remind yourself what you have and haven't crafted. I've now maxed out every single Stardew Valley NPC's friendship, excluding my baby. But we'll work on that as time progresses. <laughs> it was time to harvest more ancient fruit today. This was going to be enough now to max out the greenhouse, finally. I will get rid of the summer squash and also get rid of the broccoli as well to make way for the ancient fruits. Having a greenhouse filled up with ancient fruits is a great way to make easy money every week because it regrows all the time. It's probably still the most overpowered crop in the game. I also made a lot more mystic trees and I'm getting a lot more mystic syrups now. All these syrups sell for over a thousand gold. 
The raccoon needs more help. Is now looking for a dried cactus fruit and a wild plum jelly. Who am I to say no? <laughs> so I'm still working towards making all the recipes in the game. So I'm going to put down some cheese presses here because I need a good few pieces of cheese in order to make that happen. I also need to sell a goat's cheese and a cow's cheese in order to get the achievement for shipping of one of each item off in the game. So the first two cheeses there would be for that purpose. The next few cheeses would be for recipes. We're also going to go back to Robin and we're going to make another shade because I just need a lot more wine outputs. I now have every single recipe assembled in the game. I don't have all recipes made yet, but I still need a tropical curry and Gus would just not go to the beach for me. You need to encounter Gus over on Ginger Island to buy that recipe. There's no other way you can get it as far as I know. He won't sell it to you in Stardew Valley, which is a right pain. But I do hope that he will sell it in the next few weeks because I won't be able to get perfection otherwise. So we're back to putting up fish now. The small boat bass can be used as a sashimi. I also need to get some eels as well to make some spicy eels and I get some other bits and bobs too for the fishing recipes. The next day, I'm just looking at what I need to ship now to ship all the items and I just need the cheeses. So I'll have that done by the end of the day. I just need some fall crops as well like the bok choy, the artichoke, the eggplants, etc. So I will have that achievement got now very soon. I'm going to buy a full stack of starfruit seeds today. I'm also going to buy another few hundred, because I keep having to go back to Sandy to buy more. I can now harvest hundreds of starfruit over on Ginger Island. So I got my lovely dried cactus fruit today. The raccoon will be pleased. We're going to harvest more starfruit wine. I'm also going to make a lot more kegs as well. And these kegs are actually going to go up to the top left hand side of our farm, just side of our slime hutch. I'm in a really nice area out there using the rustic flooring. It's one of my favourite floor types. And I'm going to put on all these kegs outside. The reason why I'm doing this is because I'm getting a bit bored of the sheds. And I just want to add a little bit more structure to my farm. Because my farm is still pretty much bare. We're going to go back to Robin now. And we're going to upgrade that newly built shed to a big shed. And we will fill that one up with kegs as well. So we're going to end up with so many kegs. It'll just be very simple to get to the 10 million gold. Because I still have lots of excess starfruit. That's just lying around the chests. We're going to pick up Gus's famous omelette today, and I'm not really doing it for the money or for the friendship, I'm just doing it for the prize tickets, because they're still awesome. And you can still get some nice prizes like magic rock candies and things like that from doing it. I'm going to buy more starfruit again today. As we can see, we're just kind of redoing the same process over and over. It still is one of the best ways to get up to 10 million gold and get that gold clock. It's a lot of money. So that's why I'm not really switching up tactics. All of the new masteries are really nice. But you still can beat Starfruit when it comes to making the big money in this game. It's still going to boil down to crops. It is a farming game after all. That evening, a lot of the fall crops are ready. So we're going to get hay, wheat. We're going to get eggplants as well, which is nice. We're also going to get some bok choy. We're going to get some cranberries. All of these items can be sold off now, which will help towards perfection. I get artichokes the next day, which can also be sold off to get perfection. I'm pretty sure that's the last item I needed in order to ship off all of the items in the game. Not including the cheese, of course, that we're going to pick up right now. So that's the goat cheese and the regular cow's cheese, and that should basically be it. I'm also going to get more goat's milk here now, and I'm going to get some cow's milk and convert it into more cheese, because we need cheese for a couple of the recipes that we learned from the NPCs. So I created all of the recipes that I could, which was basically every recipe in the game, except for the tropical curry, because we still do not have that Gus refuses to go to the beach to sell me that recipe. Let's have a look at the perfection tracker. We're on 89%. What we're missing out on here now is tropical curry. That gives us 3%. I also need to get the gold clock. That would give 10%. So they're just the last two things I need for perfection. So I'm waiting for money. And we're working on that now to start with wine. And I'm also waiting for Gus to show up at the beach. So I can learn that tropical curry. If Concerned Ape watches this video, please... Let there be another way you can get tropical curry from Gus because he's not guaranteed to turn up to the beach ever. It's pure RNG. You could play through a whole year of this game and not have Gus turn up at the beach to sell tropical curry. So we're going to get a big coop now today. It'll be a nice upgrade. Our baby is now grown. Via can now crawl around the place, which is great. And we're going to process even more starfruit into starfruit wine collect the starfruit when we already have and we're going to accumulate that now for a couple of weeks and then sell it all in one big fell swoop and hopefully that will be enough to get the gold clock 
We now have lots of sheds, lots of kegs, and we now have a greenhouse built up to the top with ancient fruit. We're also going to give the raccoon here as well these dried goods he's been asking for. And we are going to get a nice reward. Seven more berry dust, which is really nice. I'm also going to make some casks here as well. I'm going to put down loads of these. I might do ancient fruit wine and then I can put it into these casks and get tons of money then after about a month. Or I could stock up on fairy dust and I could just make it all happen in the space of a day. We'll see as we progress. So I'm getting more mystic syrups now today. I can trade these in for even more fairy dust if I want. Now they do sell for a thousand gold a pop but fairy dust is quite overpowered especially if you're aging wines. It is time to up the ante. I made more mystic seeds. I'm going to plant those, put tree fertilizer on them, and then I will equip them with heavy tappers when they're fully grown. That's going to be a real nice money maker now in the next week or so when I have all those mystic juices. So I'm starting to go through the journal now today. I've got tons of quests that have accumulated over the past year and a half. I figured there might be some new secrets if I complete all the quests because who knows what kind of secrets Concerned Abe has put into 1.6. So I figured while I'm waiting for all my star fruit to get processed, I would just complete all of these quests one by one by giving all these NPCs their items. I didn't need friendship points. I didn't need the little bits of money to get from the quests. I just wanted to have all of these quests done and dusted just in case there was something that I was missing out on. I'm also processing fire quartz here. I'm going to turn them into refined quartz. And there's a method for my madness. I was going to use the refined quartz and make an absolute ton of of solar panels. I'm also combining rings here to make the ultimate cave crawler setup. The hot java ring combined with the napalm ring, the savage ring combined with the burglar ring. It was time for a lot of fun down in the mines. I'm also going to take a monster musk as well and I'm going to take a triple shot espresso and a spicy eel for tons of speed. So now when I kill monsters with the power deck equipped I'm going to get money, I'm going to get golden mystery boxes, I'm going to get either a coffee or triple shot espresso Monsters will explode, they will destroy nodes around them. I'm also going to get additional loot drops because of the burglar ring. I picked up a magic rock candy from a floaty skull. But I get even luckier. I get, believe it or not, two magic rock candies in a row. Now I wasn't recording at the time, I don't have footage showing the actual kill. But I swear on my life, I got two magic rock candies in a row from these floaty skulls. It's just so unfortunate I wasn't recording at the time. Would have made for such a great short. I did get another cursed mannequin which is really nice so I'm going to set that up in the farm now in a few hours when I go back home. I decided to kill more of these floaty skulls. I mean what are the odds I'd get three magical carnies in one day? Alas it wasn't meant to be. But we're back down in the mines. The savage ring is so good I get an additional speed buff every time I kill enemies. So after kill enemies for a full day I got two cursed mannequins, two magic rock candies, I got diamonds, amethysts, I got tons of ores. It's just so fun now to go into the caves and just kill stuff because of the amount of stuff that they actually drop. I got lots of refined quartz today. I decided to keep them for now. I won't make solar panels because I might need more iron bars for kegs depending on how things were going to go. I will trade in all my jades though and get more staircases. That's 170 staircases right there if I want to do more skull cavern runs down the road. I do have 2.5 million gold but I will need 10 million for the gold clock. So what we're going to see now is just me primarily harvesting starfruit and starfruit wine until we have the gold clock. I'm going to sell all of my rings to Marilyn now because I'm never going to use those rings. And all of the rings I'm currently using, I don't think I'm going to swap them out because they're just so good. I do complete Gus's Flameless Omniquest yet again just to pick up that prize ticket. And we're back farming Mystic Syrups. Now we're going to do Cave Patrol, 50 Dust Sprites. Now we're in the hardened version of the mines, but these enemies here count as Dust Sprites, which is really good. I also picked up a magic quiver there that just fires a, a, a magic arrow every few seconds. It does a little bit of damage. It's not too great. The Ice Rod though is pretty good for freezing enemies in their place. Because of my ring setup, I just had so much fun down here. I could spend days just running through these levels and just wiping out enemies. Look at all of the dust sprites. The only thing I regret is not taking a monster musk. If I did, there would have been even more enemies. Look at all the speed buffs I have in the top right hand corner of my screen. One is from the triple shot espresso, one is from the spicy eel, and one is from the savage ring. I would have had another one if I got lucky from the statue of blessings. So you can now have a super fast character in this game if you spec properly for it. 
I also got really lucky here on a random floor and I got tons of radioactive ore to farm. 6,000 gold for Cape Patrol, that'd be another price ticket. So I decided to have a bit of fun today and I had a spare copy of Lucky Purple Shorts. <laughs> Mayor Lewis wasn't impressed. To keep my mouth shut, he gave me 750 star tokens. Now I can't get the star fruit from this event because I already got it last year, but I can purchase a prize ticket with the star tokens that I've assembled. So I'm going to gamble some of my star tokens, get up to a thousand, and then I'm just going to go and I'm going to get the prize ticket and then leave. <laughs> it's just so funny watching Mayor Lewis's expression there when he sees his shorts up on display. So I'm going to give Kent a star fruit here now. He wanted one for Jody. And that's going to make Ken super happy. And that's one less quest to worry about in my journal. Emily gets an apricot. She's been asking for that for quite some time. And Clint gets an iron bar. He's been requesting that for ages too. Willie gets a squid. He wanted that last winter. So he's getting it now. Just had a few quests left. Pierre's going to get a sashimi. He said it's about time I was starting to get the shakes. Pierre needs sashimi for his withdrawal symptoms. Because we all know what he has stored away in his bedroom. So it was time to harvest even more starfruit. Now, at this moment in time, I had kegs set up on Ginger Island. I had about three or four sheds over on the farm, all filled up with kegs. I had kegs outside the slime hutch. I had hundreds and hundreds of kegs. So you're now going to see this 10 million come a lot faster than you'd expect. 4.5 million made there. And that was just a few weeks of farming up star fruits. A full batch plus 426. Crazy money. But that doesn't get me to the 10 million. That just gets me up to 7.1. I decided to farm lava eels for the whole day and smoke them up to see just how profitable it was. 2100 gold for an iridium lava eel. I do have the quality bobber just so you know combined with the trap bobber. And I also have artisan as well. So I'm going to get over 5000 gold for each smoked lava eel I pull up. So I made 217,000 gold. That's two days of just fishing up lava eels and smoking them. So we're off to Clint here now. He's going to process some geodes. Not geodes really, mystery boxes. But I had tons of mystery boxes accumulated now for just killing stuff. And he gets some real nice stuff out of the golden ones. Prismatic shards, life elixirs, crops, quality fertilizers. And I'm going to sell most of these just for money. There's no kind of point using them now because we're at the end of the challenge. I also got the ossified blade. It's quite the rare weapon. If you can get that early, consider yourself incredibly lucky. I had seven prize tickets here to use. Getting the star drop tea was nice, but I did have all of the friendships maxed out. It was still nice to get it though. It's such a unique and rare item. The treasure chest is really nice. That is now a universal loved gift, just so y'all know. The treasure chest is. Getting more Stafford wines today. We're very close to the 10 million gold. The problem here now isn't money. The problem here is the fact that we still do not have the tropical curry from Gus. And believe you me, I am checking Ginger Island every single day and it's just not happening i got the super rare diamond quest willie wanted it 2200 gold there for the diamond 2250 gold to be exact i'm also using fairy dust to speed up the production time on those star fruits i had a look at the key quests today i'm going to go with keys hungry challenge i'll just quickly staircase down to the bottom and pick up a nice easy couple of key gems there as well so the statue of blessings today gave me infinite energy which was nice and the statue of the dwarf king gave me an increased chance of stairs and shafts got the floor 100 got the iridium sprinklers i'll just sell those because i don't really need sprinklers anymore i did get a golden animal cracker though down for 168 i was very happy with that i am all about those golden animal crackers right now they're just so overpowered they have so much potential another auto grabber will keep that because we do have a good few animal buildings down there at the moment it happened again. The mannequins, they all moved around. It was just so freaky. One mannequin moved just up to the stairs. The other one moved into the room where the baby sleeps. Wasn't too comfortable with that. I still don't know if that's all the mannequins do. If they just move around and occasionally growl at you. They might have other hidden mechanics. If you know, please let me know in the comments. Because those cursed mannequins, they're just so freaky. <laughs> so we're getting more Stafford wines today. I've also got a lot of Iridium bars. And I'm going to sell all those iridium bars now. That's 112,000 gold. I almost have 10 million gold. I spend the rest of the day just going into the first floor of the mines. Back out again. Rinse and repeat. Farming up radioactive ores. Because radioactive bars sell for tons of money. And I end up getting tons of radioactive ores today. It's also time to finally collect all of these ancient fruits. I left them all grow together. Because I don't want to come in every day or two days. To get different parts of ancient fruits. 
So I left it a few extra days so I could harvest more in one fell swoop. It was raining today in Ginger Island. Gus is just not giving us his tropical curry. It's very frustrating. Today I made huge amounts of money, 170,000 gold. Primarily from the star fruit though, I got 85,000 gold from that. And the reason why I'm selling raw star fruit and not processing it is because I'm very close to 10 million gold. I don't need to process it. I now had 10 million gold. It was finally time to go and get this gold clock. We're almost there now to perfection. 10 million gold prevents debris from appearing on your farm. Is it worth it? It's not. It's just a flex really. It's just a wall that has been implemented so people don't get perfection too fast. Because after you get perfection, you can't get your hands on golden eggs. They just break the game entirely. They're probably the most game broken item around there. I tried to have a chat with Gus today. I thought he might give me a recipe maybe because that's the only thing that's holding me back now from getting perfection. I checked his inventory just in case. He's not selling it. I had every recipe crafted in the game. And this tropical curry was just not coming my way. I had 99% perfection done. All golden walnuts found. All fish caught. All craft recipes made. Everything cooked except the tropical curry. I had all the obelisks. I had the gold clock. There was only one thing to do folks. And that's to use the powers of Georgia. And get this perfection waiver. <laughs> 500,000 gold will get me 1%. I sold almost everything I had, including all of the new staff that I pulled up. But before I get the waiver, I wanted to go to the Halloween event to see if anything had changed. I had a quick chat with Gus, just to tell him that his tropical curry would not contribute towards perfection. That he would not contribute towards perfection of Stardew Valley. <laughs> to my surprise, the maze has dramatically changed. It is now bigger, much harder. Now, I'm sure if you go through it a few times, just to be like all the other mazes, you won't have much problems, but I'm not going to lie. I was a good 20 minutes in real life trying to figure out this maze. It was quite challenging to figure out for the first time. And I wasn't going to pull up any wikis. I wanted to do this myself for the first time. So it was a really nice surprise. And at the end of the maze, I didn't get a golden pumpkin. Because I got that last year. I got a prize ticket. I was really happy with that. There was even a minecart there as well to fast travel back. Which was a much needed addition. We are now nearing the end of this massive... 1.6 challenge to get perfection on 1.6 is just going to be awesome i do start the day with getting some mystic syrups they do sell for an awesome amount of money i will pick up all of the separate wine i will sell it i don't need to sell it anymore in order to get perfection but i want to have the extra funds there just in case something happens after perfection because concerned ape has added new things god only knows what he has added after perfection has been attained 500,000 gold for one perfection waiver this will give me 1% and because I have 99% this puts me up to 100. I was just praying that this actually worked and it wasn't some sort of Georgia scam. But because I paid so much money I'm sure it was absolutely legit. So I went to the perfection tracker and it said total complete 99% plus one waiver. The only way to find out if it worked was to go to sleep and hopefully the next day the boulder would have removed itself and we can get up to the pair to get perfection. Mr. Key says keep working hard, the usual story there, nothing changed. So I woke up the next day and I got the pop-up. You feel it in your heart. Somewhere, somehow, Grandpa is beaming with pride. The legacy of 1.6 farm is eternal, <laughs> so that was a good sign. I went outside, I was greeted by loads of parrots. It was also the first day of winter. So I was now sure that I was able to go up and claim perfection. So I got on my horse, Chuck. And we went up to the pair together. Now I did read if you try to cheat perfection you get a different cutscene. And I was really hoping that wasn't the cutscene I was going to get. So it wasn't and I do get the original perfection cutscene. My wife is waiting at the top of the pair, Penny. And she just says how proud she is and how far we've come. It's really nice, it's really cosy, it's really wholesome. And we all get to enjoy perfection together. What a challenge this was. I had so much fun playing through the game again with the 1.6 updates. I have to say, Concerned Ape is just a master developer. If all developers were like him, we would live in a world where we just wouldn't leave our houses. <laughs> we would just play games 24-7. So it was just real nice fun playing this. After perfection, I went back up to the volcano. We get the usual Concerned Ape mask, which is the question mark mask. 
But we don't stop there. We also venture forth into Key's secret walnut room and we pick up the statue of true perfection as well. This thing generates prismatic shards every day, which is really nice. Maybe one day we will get the tropical curry off Gus and we will have the true perfection, we could call it. You know, not the uh, perfection waivers. I spent a million gold inside the casino and I picked up the statue of Ennis Fortune. And this is very good. This generates an NPC's loved gift on their birthday. Any other day generates diamonds and things like that. So it's a really nice statue to have. So I purchased a full stack of coal off Clint today, 999. I got it for one reason, and one reason alone. And that was to go to the Desert Trader and get the Dark Piano. I also got the Georgia Furniture Catalogue, because I was just really curious in terms of what items you can get from that. The Dark Piano cost a full stack of coal. I was just very curious about this item, because every time I went to the Desert Trader to either get prismatic shards or staircases or anything in between, I always saw it at the bottom of the list. So for the, for the whole challenge, I was just curious. When I opened up the Georgia catalog here, it said by activating this item, the user hereby agrees not to hold Georgia Co. responsible for any damage to life or property resulting from the use of Georgia Tri Furniture. I just thought it was the funniest thing ever. But don't let that message hold you back. It's just a joke. As far as I know, the furniture won't damage any of your items inside your house. There's some real nice items here. Georgia Co. ornaments, paintings, there's even a fireplace, there's a fridge, there's couches, there's a safe, there's wallpaper, there's flooring, there's large Georgia crates, there's plastic plants, there, you can even get the Georgia trolley, you can even get the, um, the Georgia shelves that have all the products on it. You can basically turn your house into a Georgia Mart if you wanted to. During the night, Vice City gave birth to a baby cow, congratulations Vice City. We're going to call the cow Fallon, which is our newest channel member. So, if you've been watching my videos and you're on the bench about it, become a member and you will be included in one of my videos one way or another. Also, if you made it this far, consider subscribing to the channel. Let's look at the Georgia room. It looks absolutely amazing. I know a lot of people don't like Georgia, but you have to admit, the Georgia furniture does look unbelievably cool. Even the picture of Morris there adds some wholesomeness to the room because we all know Morris is such a wholesome fella. I'll tell you one thing, He's way more wholesome than Pierre will ever be. <laughs> I am going to now more than likely do more 100 day challenges. I may do 100 days again, but this time do the remix bundles and just go the community center route. Let me know in the comments if that is something you want to see. My holidays are over. I'm working again full time. So these 100 day videos will now take a few weeks instead of a few days. So if you want to see me do this full time, subscribe to the channel. If I can get 100,000 subscribers, That'll be enough for me to do this full time. That'll be enough to sustain my utility bills and my family needs and everything else. Thanks again, everyone, for taking the time to watch the video. I really do appreciate it. I hope to see you in the next big challenge. I hope you all have a great week. Hope you have a cozy week. And I'll see you very soon. Check out my other 100 day videos if you like this kind of content. There's tons of 100 day challenges on my channel for you to enjoy.